Hello, I'm Dan McDowell, longtime professional broadcaster. Why subscribe to our Patreon podcast? Well, perhaps you support our struggle to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Or objectively, if you sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you'll get the two episodes per week that are available on all podcast platforms like this one, plus an additional two episodes each week that are exclusive to Patreon. So subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes per week. Oh my, what a bargain. Now, on to today's program. The Dumb Zone. The dumb zone, dumb zone, dumb zone. Mm. Okay, which one would be Bob? I honestly, you're, honestly you're Jeff Dan. was wrong. We're not, we're not funny. Oh, okay. Well. Well, I mean, that presupposes that Bob and Dan were, yeah, which I think true. is... Debatable. That was not a comedy <laughs> podcast. Now, though, and recreation. Hilarity, hilarity ensues if and you recreation. tune in now. You won't believe what Jake has brought to the uh, presentation. <laughs> anyway, we are here on a day after the Mavs get bounced from the playoffs. Oh, a day after uh, Business Wednesday, too. I don't know if uh, everybody saw what I tweeted out. Not everybody is on the Twitter, but uh, we were on a different podcast yesterday, and that was a lot of fun. We were, yeah, and that's a guy, Mike Pesca. His podcast is called The Gist, not... Make sure you put the T at the end of Gist. And spell it with a G. Right. And... And not a trail. There's no trail. Right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So we were on his show, and that was cool for me because I used to listen to him. I listened to him for many, many years. He uh, He was a writer at Slate. I feel like that helped us get off on a great start. Because I... I tried. Yeah, no. I thought he was impressed by you bringing up his, you know, your resume. Well, on, I made it um, all up. Oh, you did? No, okay, well, no, no, no. no I, I used to listen to his show, Hang Up and Listen, which was a, a sports podcast published by Slate. Uh-huh. And he also used to be one of the co-hosts of Planet Money, which is something I used to listen to on NPR, which has had absolutely no long-term impact on my ability to handle finance. I remember listening <laughs> to that too, yeah. Yeah. Probably because I ran the board for it. But it was fun, you know. Um, I, it, I also listened to Click and Clack, and I can't tell you what to do with the, or like uh, what a carburetor is. The Tapper Brothers? I don't know what a, what's a, what's you know, a spark I, plug? I was a huge... <laughs> Well, that's funny to me. It shouldn't be because I also don't know. Yeah. Um, like, what an idiot doesn't know what a spark plug is. The Tapper Brothers, man. That was a fantastic radio program. Anybody else? Click and clack? Tap it. Uh, oh. Tap it? Yeah. I thought it was tappered. Tap it. It's Click a, and clack. It's a, it's a part in the uh, fuel injection chain. Interesting. Because they, they would do like, uh, you know, at the end, they're like, uh, you know, call our lawyers... Do we screw him and cheat him or something? Do we cheat him and how? Do we cheat him and how? There you go. Okay. I loved all their bits. Um, anyway, none of yeah, those bits are from yesterday, though. No, but if you want to go listen to that show, we're going to post it on our feed this weekend. And you can go listen to it on his feed today if you want. The gist The gist Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're here. We're expecting Adam uh, Romo to stop by because he was. Uh, so we have our lead attorney here, and we have our uh, star witness going to uh, show up at some point today too. <laughs> we have soups cash uh, Rachel, the intern. Like I've never seen her looking so casual, wearing the hat. Jake is probably pissed at that. He hates ladies in hats. Uh, that's. Uh, I didn't say hate. I simply said uh, I don't find it attractive, and I was not in a position where I wanted to find the intern attractive, so that actually works out very well. Okay. and uh, But you? Rob is always attractive. You look great. Thanks. I wore my my fun jeans today. I couldn't find my business jeans. There's business and fun jeans? If you remember, I had the business jeans all uh, set out and ready to go to uh, Austin for our, our thing on Tuesday, our very highly controversial appearance. That's what I've heard. With circling back, it's what I've read, but I've uh, given you the info because Jake doesn't look at the Soch. He's grown so much. Um, but yeah, so I'm wearing fun jeans today. That's why it's going to have a really good air about today's show. Okay. Because these jeans were made for uh, for having a good time. They're not the uh, stuffy, pressed business jeans. How many pairs of jeans do you own? Quite a few. Quite a few. But you really only consult two of them? 
no, you've probably seen a good four of them. Like, are two there of them in the four. fun category and two of them in the business category? Or, like, how does this work? Like, is there a, like, like Harbaugh has... Well, within fun, then you might, these might be my, uh, you know, show jeans, but these are my uh, home show jeans or something. It's it's hard to tell, but <laughs> all, all you have to know is I'm wearing <laughs> jeans today. We're, uh, despite the Mavs losing, I think we're feeling pretty good about today's program. Uh, I don't know if it has anything to do with it is Book Club Thursday night. I oh, don't know up, why there's a skip in my step. It's like, oh, what are you going to do? I don't know. Probably nothing. And that feels great. Yeah. Um, that's what my plan is for book club Thursday night. You know, uh, the the last couple times I've uh, been presented with, uh, with something like this, I've started an order at like four different restaurants and then like gone to another one. That's great. Because you, I'm just you like, can do oh, that that's if you great. Want. That's great. That's great. But and nobody no one, can stop me. Yeah. What if uh, I had the most complicated Kava Bowl order of all time? So I got to tell you a story, a quick, quick story before we get to the Mavs. This is about my drive home from Austin. Okay. Where I had a very long drive through a lot of traffic and weather. Traffic and weather together on my drive home from Austin. Lots um, of phone calls were made. On the on the sixes or? Well, Business for, was done. Yeah, yeah. What did they do? Is that BAP? Yeah. Some, one Something of those like stations. That. Yeah. I think they still do that stuff. Because it's like been well, sold. I mean, traffic in the car, I get. Yeah. As we've talked about, I mean, though, like traffic on television in the morning, I don't get. Yeah. Weather, I don't get really at all. However, just a couple weeks ago in the storm that uh, ERCOT termed, or maybe it was Encore, like the worst one they've ever had, I had to use like my phone for WFAA to figure out what was going on. I had no power. I had no internet. mm and that's when I kind of thought, you know what? Local TV. It's it's on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, my uh, my wife loves the riding lawnmower. We've been over that. Yep. Um, with Glee. She loves uh, riding that thing. In the winter, she'll just sit on the dryer or the washing machine. So, um, But the lawnmower broke a few weeks ago uh, in one of the aftermaths of, uh, of one of the big storms we've been having. It's the, flooded. <laughs> no, the lawn was uh, a bit mushy, and usually I would say, you know, hey, don't, or she would even say, don't go mow the lawn. Uh, it's a little wet out there. Yeah. Uh, but I think she hadn't been on it in a couple of weeks, was pretty excited to get on that thing. So she's riding around, and because it was a mushy lawn, it sunk too much over a tree that we had recently cut down, Uh huh. and then it hit the stump. And it broke the whole lawn, like the thing fell out, the engine, the thing, whatever it's called, that makes it go. The tappet. And yeah, the tappet fell out. <laughs> I don't and know. so, anyway, <laughs> that lawnmower has been sitting in our backyard for a month. Okay. Okay. And she's, you know, I don't know what she, her bit is with the lawnmower. It's her thing. And, but she had, I guess, scheduled a, a guy to come out and, and get it out of there. Oh, yeah. And it so happened to be, so I want to also tell you that on my way back, driving from Austin, uh, doing a lot of talking, doing a lot of chugging of water, as I will try and do every day. Uh, this is the third of my uh, my quarts Fantastic. that I will drink throughout the day. I hope to uh, finish the gallon by the end of the, uh, the evening. So um, if you remember our conversation, I had actually just pulled into a gas station, filled up, and I was really, uh, you know, crossing the legs, jumping up and down because I had to go to the bathroom. But we were having a great conversation. So uh, I couldn't go in and take care of that and get right back on the road, even though I was in a big wanted to get back, you know, in a hurry. Um, you and I talked for 10 or 15 minutes. Once that was over, then I went on my way. I didn't want to whatever. So you delayed me. Okay. By a good 15 minutes, Apologies. which initially you'd be like, ah, this guy. What a jerk. Yeah. So then I get home, though. As I pull in, they, my wife and lawn guy, apparently lawn guy who came to get the, lawn, the riding lawnmower, which was dead, he just came alone, showed up alone. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Although at my house, that's not a man's, uh, the first man to experience. Uh, anyway, so uh, yep. 
they are, and I'm beat. You know, the long drive, the whole Traffic, thing, yeah, just for killing sure. it on yeah. a podcast, just destroying, destroying that thing. Yeah. So um, they are they're pushing it together. <laughs> Him and your wife, because <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with it. Like it's really big and heavy and stuff, and they're really they're going through the backyard pushing it. And I'm like, oh, damn, I, I showed up at the exact wrong time because now I got to go help. But had you been there 15 minutes before? So no, wait. So I pull in and, you know, take my time getting my bag out of the car and stuff. Acted like I didn't see it because it was in the backyard and you know where the garage is and stuff. Yep. And uh, got out there. And once I got out there, they were right. They were at his truck. Perfect. Had you not delayed me, perfect. There's <laughs> no way I she would have been the one out in that backyard pushing that lawnmower. It would have been me. You're quite welcome. And you that's are, what I'm saying. I you owe you one. Welcome. I owe you uh, an apology for all the uh, the swear words I was thinking about you after I, being delayed. There have been times where. What do you got going on? Bro? I don't know. <laughs> Headphones in the chair. Headphones, there chair. have been times where I, uh, I I drove by my house and saw that like a contractor was there or mm. electrician or AC repair guy was there. Saw their truck, kept on going. Keep going, huh? <laughs> yeah. Just like, all right, I'm going to make six or seven more passes around the block. You I don't, don't want to deal with this guy. Like, I'm pretty sure my wife's not getting raped. We have a credit card. I don't need to be there. Can I know? give you can I give you a real sad Dan childhood story that you just uh pulled out of my, my head? I really hope it's not to the first thing I said. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the uh seeing a car there. So I learned this like in, in retrospect after the fact, but I'm a little kid. I don't know how old I was, 10, 9, 10, 11. And uh, some guy showed up at our house, and mom had the kids go outside and play. And uh, this guy's truck or whatever is in, in our driveway. Now, this is pretty soon after um, – I think it's, I, I can't remember if it's after or during, but, it, you know, the dad, my dad moving out was around this time. Dad one. Dad two. Dad, dad two. one is biological dad one father. Is gone. I never dad. met him. Dad two adopted me. Nominal dad. Yeah. So yeah. dad two. So this, this truck is in our driveway and uh, dad, it must've been before he moved out because dad, dad drove up. And just said, hey, you know, he just talked to me and my brother for a second, like rolled the window down, but then kept going. And it just felt weird to me. He didn't stop in. He just drove up, but then kept driving. He never got out of the car. I was to learn in retrospect, like that car, that guy was the husband of the lady that dad too was hooking up with. And, that and was apparently like he was informing the, mom. Uh, information was being conveyed in that moment. And But so he recognized the car because I guess maybe he would He's probably, stop by if the car was in the driveway at oh the other God. place. And I would learn that, you know, years later. And uh, that's just fun. That's really, really heavy, dude. Yeah. What are you, you going to do? Guys, I guess just go outside. Have a catch with your. <laughs> with Look, <laughs> just try and uh, look for dad three. As every every guy that would come over in that revolving door that was my my uh, yeah my yeah. mom's uh, bedroom almost had a lake house though almost had a lake house that would have been so great yep but she opted for a different guy for dad three but yes uh, if you see your wife having to deal with uh, a service person that you don't want to have to f with just now if she happens to see that you drove by you are in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Yeah. So you gotta... And here's how I know. <laughs> oh, she's... <laughs> that has happened? Well, and then what you do... Uh, you know what? I was thinking... Um, <laughs> vape pods are great for that. Like, what do you mean? You can say like, oh, man, I was out. I, I, I didn't want to have to get back out oh, later on tonight. Oh, I didn't see the, car, the truck was there? Oh, I didn't even... No, it was just that I had to turn around and yeah. go back to the gas station real quick and, yeah. and make sure I had pods for, for tomorrow. Right. 
You know I can't. Now, that's usually going to come with a follow-up of when are you going to quit. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, you'd rather <laughs> deal with better, that exactly. than... Exactly. That's a better that's I didn't want problem. to go take something off your plate as you have two <laughs> kids in there, you're working on dinner. Right. And, Dog and cat are running around. And dealing with uh, the service guy. Yeah. Bug man or something. Did I tell you about the lizard the other day? <laughs> Mark that, Beth. Go on. It, this isn't the snake. It's not. No. Because I saw the snake. The, the snake I killed. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say this since I'm in a rent house, but I, I feel it. Whoa. You okay? <sighs> Eatsy's Market and Bakery. <laughs> Tastes That's good like on the way back up. Their stinger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like I, I live pretty close to where you live right now, so you know that the the lizard is is prominent. Love the lizard. We got a uh, a couple of them that live out back. A, a man and a woman, we think. <laughs> man and a woman. Yeah. And uh, I went into the bathroom. I suppose it, it was before we went to Austin, so it was either Sunday. It must have been Sunday night. And uh, opened up the the, I guess you'd call it a hamper laundry basket i don't know it's it's a like a thing it's like a wicker basket with two sides to it right mm -hmm. his and hers uh and i oh you have your own little laundry place you don't share the laundry well i mean a his and hers it's the same basket but it is divided as like this side is for my stuff this side is okay his. that's interesting i we just put all ours together but again we put all our money together and we don't venmo each other when we I mean, it doesn't really end up being that productive because a lot of times I'll open my side and I'm like, I don't wear panties. Okay. <laughs> it was just throwing all this stuff on my side. But the other t uh, other day what I found was uh, was a lizard. In your yeah. hamper. Yeah, it was probably, it wasn't big. It was probably six inches maybe. And what do you do? But it wasn't like tiny, tiny. What's your play? Uh, Walk away? <laughs> <laughs> do you just kind of leave it and let it go, figure out where it's going to go? So or do you try to get it outside? Well, I mean, I definitely tried to get it outside, but I started pulling clothes up. Uh, I think what I first went to do was go get a bag. Mm -hmm. I thought if I could just pick it up in a bag, like a, a piece of poop, I could just throw him outside. Yeah. But when I went back in there, gone. Mm. So now he just lives amongst us. <laughs> like, I have no idea where it went. Uh, that's okay. The lizard is wife your friend. Was, wife was super mad about it. That you couldn't find it? Yeah, she's like, so what, it's just inside now? Yeah, it'll find its way out somewhere. It'll, and I, it'll you know, the, and, through the and wall people or say you eat, like, uh, you eat like 20 of them a year in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, though, Philip. The cat, that's what I was counting on. I'm like, what the fuck are you here for if it's not yeah. to take care of this? Is the cat violent? Or is the cat pretty cool? Have you seen it attack any kind of an animal? Uh, a two-year-old boy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he probably deserved it. He 100% deserved it. If I remember anything about him. <laughs> he asks for it, and he gets answered. <laughs> so, yeah, I live with a lizard now. All right. Anyways. Have we ignored the Mavs long enough? Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to play the Open? Ba, 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 basketball. Give me, For the penultimate the time this year. Draft. It's coming up. What are we going to do with the draft? I don't know. I don't I don't think they even have a pick. <laughs> are we going to live stream? I, I suppose we could. I don't think there's like a like a Wimby this year. Although I did see like an 11-year-old 6'10 kid the other day in Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. Like fifth, sixth grade. He's just shooting threes and he's almost seven feet tall. So that'll be fun when he's on the Thunder in three years. Do you think the Four NBA years. will ever be able to draft players that are 11? Would that be fun? Would you like that? I mean, it sounds crazy, but that's essentially what European academies do, right? Like they do it yeah. with soccer and with basketball. You, I mean, that's what Luca did. He moved to Madrid. That's because uh, they are truly capitalist in the way they run their leagues. Yes. As opposed to the much more capitalist society of uh, of America. But but no, I mean, 
they're in a bad spot, obviously. I almost hope they just get it over with, <laughs> you know? Like, However, it, we have talked, though, I've talked, that I do believe, you know, the eight seed beating a one seed is more prevalent than it ever has been. I think there is more parity at the top of basketball than there ever has been. Usually, you know, the old days, it was one team was so much farther and away, uh, you know, better than the other teams. Definitely. And I do think we will see in the next decade. That gives me a lot of runway. (laughs) Boy, you're going full Stan Van Gundy here. That we will see a team come back from 3-0. In the finals. Just a team come back from. I suppose, let's just start I, with I, saying. I suppose it would actually be more likely in the finals because it's more likely that the two teams are evenly matched. Yeah. Whereas, like a like a first round one eight matchup, that's like a massive disparity in talent and roster composition, and that's probably never going to happen. Now the problem is, it does not look that these two teams are evenly matched. It looks like Boston is so far and away better than the Mavs and. You know, I thought, I mean, just where they kind of got back in it yesterday was the uh, the, the bench play, you know? Of, like, what, of the, which team? The Mavs. Like, I thought Boston got back in it kind of in that first quarter when subs started coming in the game. It's like, oh, okay. Well, boy, that Boston bench. I thought yes. I thought role players are supposed to suck on the road. That's yeah. what I've always uh, always learned. I don't and th- their role players were not. They they got some guy named Xavier Tillman. <laughs> He'll give you twelve minutes and who hits a three out body. of nowhere. Yeah, I don't. They've think got uh, little white guys. They definitely have little white guys. Like Pritchard angers me. Of course he does. Uh, Sam, Sam Hauser? Hauser. Who the hell is Sam I'm Hauser? To deal with this guy now. He's doing stuff. <laughs> uh, like you got enough problems on that team without these guys. Yeah, and your your guys are giving you nothing now. We may have been responsible for the game three loss because both of us were like, why not try Tim Hardaway? (laughs) And then he was effing terrible. And the only way they got back into the game is like the 20 to two run they went on literally started the second the kid was like, I've seen enough. So, <laughs> so that might have not now, been our best. Now, on one hand, yes, <laughs> uh, we both did it say that, and I think a lot of people were thinking it, and obviously Jason Kidd is a big listener. However, when you see it's not really going well, you might want to pull the plug a little with earlier. It, do you? Yeah. No, I mean, like even Dante Exum, they're giving him a little taste. In fact, Dante Exum showed a little something. Yeah. And is that what made Kidd say, "Ah, it's enough." I don't want you stealing all the thunder from everybody. And Dante <laughs> Exum looks too small to have really been too effective, but he, he did Jayden a little something. Hardy, like Jaden Hardy will get like three minutes, and Ken's like, all right, maybe we Yeah, you kind of give it do. a shot. Yeah. If if you see that they're hot or whatever, let's ride that. But, but how about if you see the opposite? Yeah, they rode they rode Hardaway for... He played more than uh, uh, Derek Jones. He did. He did. And then Maxi, kind of the same thing, like, I feel like his uh, usefulness has waned quite a bit. Just think that Maybe those guys unhealthy, but were kind of really big parts of their playoff team a couple years ago. Not only were those guys a big part of their playoff team, uh, Reggie Bullock, if I'm not mistaken, is currently unemployed. He might have been picked up by somebody after being waived a couple times. Really? Damn. He was, dude, he was playing 44 minutes a Absolutely, game yeah. He was the 3 and D guy. Right there with Dorian. And now nobody really even wants Dorian for anything more than, you know, pennies on the dollar. And those were the four guys that they had with Luca at that time. So it's better now. Incredible. It's definitely better now. And that's yeah. why they've advanced further than they had before. But they're still too over leveraged on the fact that they don't have anybody <laughs> outside of Kyrie and Luca that can create their own offense. Maybe Jaden Hardy becomes that guy. PJ uh, tries it a little bit. He had a little bit of bounce last night. But, it wasn't, but the, he also like is the type of player where the second he's like it's PJ time, I'm like, ooh, yeah, let's. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this is going to go poorly. Out of him, yeah, yeah, and it usually does. Um, 
<laughs> I do have some probably unfounded hope that Derek Lively turns into like a stretch five. And that's really just because I watch him like making 30 out of 33s in practice, which I understand. We've all been fooled by that before, but I think he's a star. I think he is going to be an absolute star. But yeah, and if he's getting I mean, a lot of open looks out time. there, that'll be one thing, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, if you're if you have the ability to not only roll but pop, and he's already proven like his rim running roll game to be super effective, which is actually something they got back to last night early. If he could, if he could shoot it, you know, all of a sudden he's an an all NBA candidate. But at the end of the day, if you're going to get 60 plus points from Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Derek White, obviously, like way better than whoever the Mavericks' third best player is. And that's before you even get to Drew Holiday, who only scored nine points last night, but was super, super efficient all the way around offensively and defensively. And the Mavericks don't have that. Yeah. They get out coached. Boston had 55% of their shots last night come from three, and none of them felt forced or like were heaving to get back into this game. It felt like, and I think Doris and JJ pointed this out a couple times, it felt like because they weren't even having to dribble the ball. They were just whipping it around from side to side, from wing to top to wing, and then there's an open shot. So. When Derek White hit that three off the glass and it rattled in, that's where I wrote down, we lost. That's your bit. <laughs> we lost. We lost. But the Mavs actually did get back in it. Yeah. So you get back in it. And I'm going to jump around because there's other things that happen that we have to talk about. But let's say when Luka does foul out, you've already seen what Tim Hardaway has done or not done in that game. Go well, back to how Tim did you it. feel when it, when, <laughs> when it's like, hey, who, oh, Lucas fouled out. Let's bring in Tim Hardaway at this point. I don't know what their other answer is. You got to go Hardy. It, you have to. It would have to be better. I mean, at that point, to be honest with you, what I wanted was for literally no one else to touch the ball but Kyrie. How about when? Like that's. Uh, I think I was. I can't remember if I said this at the, the. I think I said this at the start, but it was definitely before we started talking. When my daughter heard me, uh, saw me this morning, and was like, "Hey, is that, why were you yelling last night?" The biggest yell I had was when Luca fouled out. Uh, and I'm not proud of this at all, but I yelled, "It's fucking Kyrie time!" Uh, it turned out it really wasn't. Um, I mean, that was your only option. It had to be. Yeah. If it was going to be anything. I just had but this image in my somehow mind. Somehow Boston of like, knew that too. <laughs> we're, yeah. We're down 2 0. Kyrie's there. He doesn't have that many possessions, but he only has a few points to make up. Like he is about to make his legacy right now. It would have been, yeah. But yeah, as you said, also uh, the Celtics and Joe Missoula, uh, Missoula knew that as well. 104.98 with 22 seconds left, so not much chance still. But Boston trying to foul, another good coaching uh, decision to uh, just do that. You don't usually want people to score with the clock not moving at that time, but they couldn't afford to give up a three. Yeah. The foul wasn't called. Really as weird. would be an argument, I'm sure, for many Mavs fans today on fouls not being called on certain people. But the foul not called on Hardaway, so he has the most wide-open shot anybody could ever have. And, man, I hope that's the last shot we ever see taken from <laughs> Tim Hardaway. That would be appropriate, I think. You wanted that to be his— He just clanked uh, that off. Uh, uh, a month before now. I mean, it wasn't even close. Like the Zeke last possession. Yeah, like yeah. Like where he's playing center. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think they will, but they could release him before game four. <laughs> before would that, game four? Yeah, no, would I, that just I inspire the I, team? I, I had not considered that possibility. <laughs> it might, though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what stands out for you from him yesterday? Was it the missed open three and then Boston coming right back down to make – he had this one series – or one sequence where he misses a wide open three, uh, it long rebound. Boston comes down, buries a a three, and on on the next possession down, Hardaway drives to the basket. I'm going to try that because I can't hit my three. He gets it blocked, and in transition, 
Boston drives to the basket and dunks. Yeah. Like it was just like a Hardaway keeps giving them the ball in right in the pocket, right where they need it to uh, to score. This is great. That was the third uh, the third quarter where Boston just came out like nuts, made their first six shots. I think seven, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I mean it was a it was a very strange game where the Mavs were up one at half and Luca only had one foul, and he fouls out. He like with ample time left. Not like on the last possession. So at that point, you're thinking like, all right, well, and man, I can't remember if it was his fourth or fifth, but one of them was just so, so dumb. Like Boston had just gotten a rebound and was looking to get out in transition. There's literally... Was it the reach around trying to poke the ball away? Because he'll get that one. That one was the one on Jalen. Okay. That I thought eh, was a little questionable. Brown might have hooked him a little bit. This one I'm thinking of is either four or five. It was not questionable at all. He's underneath the opposition's basket. They grab a rebound and he just like hugs a guy. And it's like, dude. Yeah, if you're you, gonna if you he's gonna I, foul, it should be close to them scoring a basket. Yeah, and like not so far. To be away. honest, you know what I'd rather you do? Just yell at the ref and sit the possession out. <laughs> like they're probably gonna score either way, but now you're one step closer to being disqualified from the the competition do you think he saw that little thing from game maybe it was even game one just the montage of him being a matador guys just blowing by him didn't 20 guys blow by him during the game yeah i mean he probably did see it because i think all these guys see everything but he has been absolutely atrocious defensively in this series and then when you have five fouls do you say okay i now i'm going to be a matador yeah uh, or do or I not be? Yeah, like no, I'm no, going no, to. You, yes, I, I want to. I yeah. want to let you go. Um, Rather than like that's when I'm he gonna, gets the blocking foul. I'm going to hip check you at the three point line. All right, let me say this about ESPN too. So a couple minutes before that, he got his fifth foul, where he was hooking the arm, mm-hmm. and he was complaining like yelling the kid challenge that. Doris says, "Oh." It's a timeout. They're challenging that. I was very confused by that. They go to break. They come back. They don't even mention it. Yeah. They don't even act like it happened. They never said it was his fifth foul. They didn't say they didn't challenge it. They just kind of go on. And now, about a minute later, he gets a foul. And they go, oh, that's his sixth foul. Wait. (laughs) Wait. No. That's his sixth foul. Oh, And they're going to challenge. Wait. They're going to challenge. And then they go right to break, of course. Like, this is how they deal with these challenges. Yeah. ESPN, man. God, they suck. I feel like they should just let McAfee do everything. He's so awesome. Yeah, let have, let's have him. Like he's the best, you know. He's Standing making there, money. He's wearing the T-shirt. Got a chain. You got AJ Hawk next to him. Yeah, whatever else he does, I'm not really sure. Speaking of ESPN, do you want to play uh, a little bit of this uh, Windhorst that has made made news? Sure. I, I, I'm going to play it either way. Yeah, I thought it was rhetorical. Yeah. So this is from. Uh, Scott Van Pelt, who does Sports Center after the game. Not a bad watch, not my favorite. I feel like SVP's become a little too like uh if like a fifty year old were in dude perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, somehow that just makes sense without me having to explain it. Um but now he's got Wendy on. Also gonna tell you this. For the first time in a long time, I feel like Wendy lost a little weight. Did he really? Because if you recall, one of the main things that I respected about him over the 15 years that I've known who he was, it's that everybody was like, you're going to be on TV today. You're going to be on TV tomorrow. You're going to be on TV this weekend. And he was like, I'm going to be fat. Yeah. He's uh, at, he's at no point. He's zigging. At no point was he like, what if I got in shave? And usually. And I love that. When people work in that you know, when you work in sports, usually you're you're around everybody else's kind yeah, of shape. Like, you're oh, around what's your workout routine, yeah, Pro- yeah. and you're on TV. Yeah. When you add all that together, and he's, he's just like, no, he's got time. He's got a, a gym. You know, in the he's hotel, got yeah. And he just has never shown any interest into it until apparently this diabetes drug became. <laughs> Oh, it's Ozempic. Okay. Luca and Kyrie combined for actually more than Tatum and Brown did, but Luca fouls out late. I just wonder your reaction to that whole sequence. 
Yeah, um, I thought it was perfect that Luca fell onto the ground there in an unacceptable position to put himself in with four minutes left with five fouls, and then immediately looks at the bench and says, you better bleeping challenge it, as if it's the bench's fault that he just made a terrible play. I'm standing here in the Mavericks tunnel. Over there is the Celtics tunnel. That's where the winners are. If Luca's ever going to be a winner coming out of this tunnel here, he is going to have to use this. Have what's happened in this finals as a learning experience. His defensive performance is unacceptable. He is a hole on the court. The Celtics are attacking him. They are ahead in this series because they have attacked him defensively. And you've got a situation here where Luca is complaining about the officiating. They have begged him. They have talked with him. They have pleaded with him. He is costing his team because of how he treats the officials. He's a brilliant player. He does so many things well. They are here because of how he did. His performance in this game is unacceptable and the reason why the Mavericks are not going to win. He's got to get over this. And the fact that he came out after the game and blamed the officials showed me he's nowhere close yet. So maybe over the summer somebody will get to him because nobody with the Mavericks or anybody else in his life has. And that's where the Mavericks are at this point. They're never going to get to this tunnel with the trophy if he doesn't improve those aspects of his game. Brian Wenhorst, uh, I'll leave it right there. I appreciate your time, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again this series. You think we get to a Game 5 Monday or no? I'm very interested to see what Luka does on Friday. The, ban the 18th banner is coming to Boston. The duck boats are getting loaded up one at some point. I want to see how Luka reacts because he owes his team a better performance in Game 4. Whoa. <laughs> I don't you know, know I'm that, not mad at you, Luca. I'm just disappointed. I don't know if that's like the takeification of yeah. ESPN because like Windhorse didn't really used to be that guy. He's like a reporter. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's got a podcast. He writes columns where he's like critic, somewhat critical of teams and their coaching and their general managers, but I've never heard him go that hard. So I don't know if it's just that bad or – it's the takeification or a combination of both, but I can promise you when he says they've talked to him, they've begged him, they've pled him, he's not saying that unless someone has told him that. Not a guy who I think Just make, about his makes defense. things up. No, that yeah. was about the officials. About the yelling at the officials. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Can't really because, plead a guy to be better defensively. Well, he it's did say like, in there, like, Boston is winning this series because of Luka's defense, and I don't think I agree with that. I don't think I agree with that. However, he has been absolutely hunted. <laughs> yeah. And that's what a team with five good players can do to you. You know, a, a team with two good players, three good players, like, we'll hide him. We can figure this out. But if you have five, six guys who can be on the court at any time when Luka's out there that are solid offensively and can create off the bounce, they'll find you. And if they don't find you, they'll find Kyrie. And then that's possibly why you're seeing Luka get, you know, wearing down by the end of these games. And because, then he gets pissed off. Because number one, he's got to do about everything offensively. Yeah. Because they're not letting him use the rest of his teammates. And then, yeah, they're making him work as hard as he could ever work defensively. And that's when he gets mad. And then he gets mad. And then he commits <laughs> stupid fouls. Yeah. And they complain. Now, part of his complaining is I truly believe he gets beat up more than someone who is not his size who plays a similar game. You know, like. Definitely. He gets fouled a lot. And he has true gripes about not getting some calls. I think he gets about the worst whistle a superstar has had in my entire time of watching the NBA. Like if, if there were two things that I would want to point out that I think are heavily biased, I saw a lot of people last night saying that they thought Doris was like anti-Dallas. I don't really have a broadcaster gripe other than I don't think she's very good anymore. Mm -hmm. But I do think the referees, just with Luca, not like with the Mavs in general, or, but I, I think the way that he plays, he does not get officiated well. At all, for a player of his caliber, I agree. And part of it is just his size too, and just because that weird Shaq used to stop start stuff like that. Just is confusing, you right? Know? But it's what gets him fouled. Yeah, that's how you <laughs> you can trick, sure. trick people. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think that in general the 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 NBA does not know how to how to officiate him properly. Uh, and it doesn't help because then he's just going to bitch about it. <laughs> yeah. So the jumping around that I wanted to do, 
I can't believe at the time, and I still really haven't. I mean, I guess I didn't listen to the post games and stuff, but so they are making an enormous run. They're coming back. Uh, I don't even know what the run ended up being. I know it was a you know after a PJ three that was a seventeen to two run at the time. Yeah, when twenty two was the the total run twenty two to twenty to two. Mm-hmm. Um, I noted there, Luke. That's another place where Luca was getting fouled, not called. Uh, Kyrie gets fouled on a three. He cuts it to three with three free throws. So it's ninety three ninety six eleven left. And as you know, I'm not huge on uh, the existence of momentum, but I do acknowledge that there are runs, and I do acknowledge that I like when kid will call a timeout if the other team is on a run. Um, it was pretty deflating that kid had to call a timeout. Like, was it after the? Oh yeah, it was uh, the start of the fourth. Boston starts with two free threes. And kid calls a quick timeout, and I'm thinking, well, what is he telling him? They just had a whole quarter break. <laughs> yeah. And one minute what later. We talk about then. Uh, yeah, we just hey, remember what I just said. Um, like we had five minutes to implement our plan. Okay, so this is going to be. You know the, where I'm going this, here. Go ahead. Yeah. So now, you know, they're on a big run, and this is the the definite spot where Boston would call a timeout if they were able to. Uh, but they weren't able to because, you know, they they would kept missing shots and, and the Mavs would get the rebound. So Boston misses a shot with 525 left. The Mavs are down three. And Jason Kidd calls a timeout. And it looked like Luka kind of went nut. Like, whoa, wait, what? I just got the ball. We're ready to push it up. We're making every shot. <laughs> yeah. We're stopping. We're it, getting it, it, a stop on every possession. It was super We're weird. We're not stopping this. And Kid is the one who called the timeout. Okay, so this was Why? Go- this was going to be my ender, but since he was asked about it as the ender of his press conference, I'm going to play this for you now. This they waited what- till the end? Uh yeah. It so It feels like that was a pretty significant thing. It was, however. Uh, I guess uh, Matt, Luca fouled out. That's important. The Luca too. foul out. How are you yeah. going to come back from down 3-0, etc. Right, right. So this is a, a question about a terrible move by Jason Kidd, but unfortunately the question is so terrible that it almost overshadows the decision. Coach Kidd, Noah Weber of the Smoking Cuban, they're in the second. By the way, I just want to note, they're just creden- they credential like a ton of digital outlets now. It's called the Smoking Cuban. It's a website. I'm sure they have fine writers there. It's not like I've always written for the New York Times. Yeah. <laughs> but... Yeah. Coach Kid, Noah Weber of the Smoking Cuban. There in the second half, y'all on that big run, and you called that timeout. I was curious as to your reasoning behind that, and how do you balance wanting to get your guys some rest, but also wanting to keep the momentum of the run? Right now, not a terrible question. Okay. You're, you're, you're bringing up a questionable decision and saying. Well, he also tried to answer it with the second part of his question. Just that first part's good enough. Yeah, but I feel like he's at least providing the option of like. What are the what is the logic behind the way that you decided? Like, he's, do we need rest? He's anticipating need- his answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what timeout? And I think is the in the fourth. At, what, at the end of the fourth. I think it was. What during the, I, I, I the twenty couple, to two run? I called a couple timeouts. Okay, the one that was at the end of the twenty to two run. When we missed the two shots. To be honest, I don't remember what happened before. I just know it was a timeout. That's tough. Okay, so you can tell. Like, we're about to have... Like, yeah, let's get your notes straight, bro. you got to have the notes straight because this guy... If I'm putting Jason Kidd on the hot seat, you gotta, I better you be ready be, to go back and forth because he's going to... And you know, look, he's not going to sit there and nod and go, yeah, man, I made a big mistake. You're right. Yeah, and like... I'm not saying I've done this at this level by any means, but like this isn't happening to Timmy Mac. <laughs> and when kid says that's tough, he's not talking about the timeout. He's talking about the failure of this reporter. <laughs> yeah, it's tough that you don't have your... <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember what happened before. I just know it was a timeout. That's tough. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys laughing? Because now the rest of the press room is laughing. Well, he's laughing and kid too. kid knows it's funny. Yeah. But he's doing the like, well, what's funny here, huh? Yeah. When it's clearly just him. 
Why are you guys laughing? I, I asked what timeout was it. I, I, I called a couple timeouts. You got you to do better. Right, and we missed the three. Thank you. We missed the three, and we missed uh, Kai's pull-up. And it's a one-possession game. So that's, that's why we called the timeout. Um, we exerted a lot of energy on the defensive end and offensive end, so that's, that's why we called the timeout. Thanks for clarifying that. Way to step up. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. <laughs> All right, terrible answer, though. Way to step up. No, it's a terrible answer, but... That's why? Because you missed two shots? You missed two shots, and you were really tired from playing defense. But Keep you were it down rolling, three, bro. and you had erased a 21-point deficit over, like, the last... 18 minutes of like real life time but that guy that's where they call sure, the timeout of course and yeah. is this was this a hey i gotta use a timeout before i lose it or i think it was a use it or lose it but you don't always have to use it no that's Sometimes the you thing can just lose it <laughs> like you you're you're creating a run here and like things are like, going well like at some, and i'm yelling at my tv and my daughter's hearing me that means things are going well at this time somewhere somebody taught him about use it lose it and he's like, that is what I'm doing. And and he does it, and then he got praised for it. You know, I'm sure we even were probably surprised he started doing that stuff or yeah, the, way, a, but, but the way he implements Luca Rest. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, just him going, <laughs> that's tough. <laughs> <laughs> got to do a better job and step up. <laughs> and that was the end of the press conference. There were a couple other things, too. Um these are both really kind of like on Luca foul type stuff. Like I said, I would have liked to end with that one, but we yeah. were already there. So, uh, Luca six. What, what did you think of that? Uh, they called a foul. <laughs> okay, so are you already just? God. <laughs> uh, they called a foul. I I was stuck. I had to challenge it. So. Um, had the challenge because it was, you know, a close call. But the referee called it a foul. Just got to move on, move forward. Got to move forward. Okay. And then um, this is on the challenge, I believe, on the hook call that you referenced earlier that they didn't make. I mean, Ohasan Media, Metal Arc Media, Coach, what, what, was there any discussion about Luca's fifth foul? I'm challenging that when Jalen Brown hooked. And if not, why not? Maybe we should have challenged all of them. Okay. I mean, you're going to ask you that clever? question about challenging the fifth foul. Why wouldn't we challenge them all? Well, I mean, just cause it seemed because Brown hooked them. It looked like there was a hook there. and Yeah, it look, looks can be deceiving. <laughs> what an a-hole. That's all he's got. Yeah. Why not challenge all of them? Well, we're going to challenge the third one. No, how about just the ones you think possibly could be overturned? Yeah. And, you know. Not like. Not, you know, not if Dante Exum gets a foul. Like, them, yeah. How about if Luka Doncic, yeah. you're in the fourth <laughs> quarter and he gets his fifth foul. And the and the, the broadcast even. The broad, yeah. Has we're going to break, to the point think. where they're like, they should probably challenge this. Yeah. And then you come back from break and Jason Kidd's like. Well, why don't I challenge all of them? Yeah. Just, why can't I challenge your fouls too? Yeah. You, did you make a foul? <laughs> it's just so. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's like with Jerry. Nothing he says actually matters. But I do get very annoyed just listening to his past the buckness. Uh, but at the same time, dude, and that's why I, I I had a really hard time like writing about this this morning because it's frustrating. I broke a remote control. My daughter heard me yelling. Um. I'm mad at Luca, but at the same time, dude, they made it to the finals and they lost to the Celtics. Yeah, and the that's, Celtics that's are for a something. GD machine. They won 64 games. They have the number one or number two offense and defense. Right, they, they it have was two All NBA players. Like, this, this, the odds makers who always know what they're doing. They don't. They don't build those casinos for free, Dan. That's right. That's a dad. That's a dad's statement for sure, right? Your, your dad has absolutely said that to you a thousand times. Um, this was a, a very lopsided, one of the most lopsided odds in NBA history. Yeah, uh, certainly in like the modern era type thing. 
Um, you know, like the the Mavs, the 2011 Mavs had better odds going into that series against the Heat, and we think that was astronomical odds. Correct. But it wasn't compared to this. So, yes, the fact that they are, you know, down 3 might be a little surprising, certainly concerning, but in the end, you know, and it will be a thing where, hey, Boston has been taking steps and this is – the logical conclusion to that kind of the way the Mavs slash Luca have been taking steps to get to the finals. Uh, whereas, you know, Minnesota, that was like, they showed up. They were happy to be. Yeah. And the Mavs are now in the spot where they're happy to be in the finals. Uh, a couple of ESPN things to end our Mavs talk. Um, is this a dirty sound? They still haven't missed here on the third. And, and Dallas essentially went to a zone there. But again, it's Luka Doncic getting beat off. I want to tell you something, okay? And this, is, this is just a little behind the scenes. I heard that and thought, this is not good enough for me to pull and play. <laughs> When he said beat off the dribble and I Yeah, I was like I I had the audio on my computer, I did the fade and I listened to it and well, I was I like, added in some more crowd noise. To I heard a little bit better. at the end there. Yeah, but I actually heard that live, yeah. pulled the audio and thought, nah. At first I thought Dan, that too. I thought Dan would think this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I didn't pull the audio. <laughs> and now here we are. Uh this surprised me. Now, you know Mike Breen is trying to be a cool guy calling Doris DB. But he's bringing, out, Breen. he's bringing out something different here. And it, it gave me some information I didn't know. Here in game three, the Celtics have quieted the crowd. They've opened up a 21-point lead with a dominant second half. Jonathan Clay Reddick, you have something to say? <laughs> Mike, I think tonight is a great example of trust what you do. What? He said Jonathan Clay Reddick. And so I was like, what, what are they doing that for? Huh? So what's his what's his middle name? Apparently his middle name is Clay. Hey. And yes, so I thought, what wait, what did he say? And then I went to Wikipedia and yeah, his name is Jonathan Clay Reddick. For some reason his name's JJ. So that surprised me. Like can I be JJ? I, I guess so. Could you be DD? Your middle name is uh, M, right? Can he be P P? I, I suppose so. <laughs> no, that's really weird. That surprised me. It's weird on two fronts. It's weird that that's his name, and it's weird that Mike Breen would randomly decide to At provide point, that information. Like, he's been around for 25 years. Right. Yeah, that's strange. Jonathan Clay Reddick. This was the... Uh, it was game six. Uh, he needed to get to it. Oh, you know what? You might be right. Like... You do see that sometimes in these games where you're like, got to dump the bag. Yeah, Phillip said uh, the mic wasn't on yet. He said it was a game six note. Yeah, it might be like and before, He's got a bunch of things I want to work in during this series. Before oh you gosh. or I go on vacation, yeah. we're just like, all right, well, everything that I've had for like a week and a half, we have to do that now. Yeah. yeah. This was uh, the sounds of the game, mm. which was Joe Missoula at halftime. Joe Missoula hired at the age of 35. Damn. He had a, I mean, he's a great coach. Just another guy to make me feel like a failure. <sighs> yeah, I, for whatever reason, well, I guess I know the reason. Uh, the coaches who are younger than you make me feel like way more of a failure than the players. Like, oh, yeah. I can what see can you myself do about the kind of being Mike McDaniel. Yeah, you could I never. Like, I was. I was. A you can't guy. be Tyreek Hill. My Madden playbook was awesome. Right. Uh, anyway, here was his halftime, which just shows you know you think our halftime speeches like do they send you screaming out of the locker room? We are getting great. We are getting great shots. We have to fight for great shots. Hey, it's a one point game on the road. All right. You know, we got to play even. Just even the, like, one, two, three together. Like, the whole crowd, they don't care. They're not screaming. You know, it's They're weird. They're not yelling. I, 
obviously I know coaches do a lot. Like they help with development, they help with install, they help with scheme, they help with techniques and tactics. I feel like we have way, way past the point, if there was ever a utility for it, for needing those sorts of talks. Yeah. Like every time they show kid doing it, I'm just like, who's listening to this? Yeah. I'm like, what are the, what is their reaction to it? Like I, I remember in high school, because as, as I've told you, like we would get our brains beat in and we'd be like in there at halftime and it's like 34 to seven. And he's like, you know, trying to give this raw, raw thing. And it's like, dude, we all know what the fuck is about to happen. <laughs> like they're going to put up 30 more <laughs> We might kick a field goal. But your t- coach you, had seen a lot of movies. You know that too. Yeah. And it's just like, why are we even in here listening to you yell like this? Everyone knew. It just feels like the biggest charade ever. And to do it at like the professional sport level where everybody's making 10 to $50 million a year, it's just weird to me they even try to fake it. What if we got Michael Irvin in there to pump up the team? Would might, that help? Might be the exception I'd be willing to offer you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm so glad you didn't watch the halftime show, and not many people do, from what I understand. I don't, I don't watch much of the ESPN halftime show. No, TNT, I'm there. Oh but yeah. ES- ESPN, it's it's probably not happening. Okay, so here's an illustration why. So they do, they get dragged, I guess, uh, online for like d- very short segments. Yeah, it's too, just too mostly much commercials. Just commercials. Yeah, or too many commercials, rather. I'd like to play you. This is their entire second segment. <laughs> okay. So they had the first segment. They threw it around the horn. Yep. They go to break. Five minutes of spots. This is their entire second segment before five more minutes of spots. The entire segment. Okay. Got it. Welcome back to the Kia Halftime. Let's check out our Kia halftime highlights here. Paul George, Kyrie Irving had his fifth career 20-point half in the finals. What did you see from him? Huh. What did you see from Kyrie? Uh, I, I just see Kyrie just being aggressive. Um, They're going to need a little bit more of that in the second half. This halftime report is presented <laughs> by the Kyrie Kia EV9. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like they didn't even know, like... The dude wasn't teed up that they were going to, like... Hey, are you talking to me? She, she yeah. said, this is our halftime highlights. Yeah, I mean, we It the- was Kyrie shooting one shot. Mm-hmm. And it was like slow motion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, it, and the whole report was 15 seconds. The big voice, welcome back. Right. Like, to yeah, let's... Kia, Kia Soul halftime Let's show. look at the time between the big voice <laughs> uh, open and the big voice uh, closed. That's amazing. That is. Welcome back to the Kia Halftime. Let's check out our Kia Halftime highlights here. Paul George. Kyrie Irving had his fifth career 20-point half in the finals. What did you see from him? Huh. What did you see from Kyrie? Uh, I, I just see Kyrie just being aggressive. Um, They're going to need a little bit more of that in the second half. Dude. 13 seconds. This halftime report is presented by the all-electric like, three-row Kia EV9. There are absolutely Division three college broadcasts that do a better hit than that. Like, she tees it up, and then he's like, "What? am I supposed to talk now? When? What? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, what did you know. see from Kyrie? I'm being he's, aggressive, he's I guess. Playing, I'm, I'm getting a, a coffee and a hot dog over here. What, the, <laughs> what are you asking me for? I mean, you're here for the halftime. Good that is- God, that's bad. Man. Did you pick up any... Uh, do you have any more? No. Okay, did you pick up any... People think that Doris and... Uh, what's What What was his full JJ, name? JJ. Uh, John... J, J, Clay? Something. <laughs> Jason Clay, John Clay. You shut up. <laughs> Something Clay. Yeah. Pe- uh, I got, mama called him Clay. I got two emails and one tweet from people that think that they're... Uh, <laughs> stop. That think that they're uh, flirty. There's sexual tension? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not picking that up. Is it just because... They- I bet Breen wants to hit that. <laughs> hit that? What, bro? I thought we were hanging. 
I don't know, man. I'm going to challenge that. <laughs> Why don't I challenge everything? Yeah, all right. The dumbs up, dumbs up. You know, I took acting classes when I was younger. What? And <laughs> it shows. Yeah, I was in acting class uh, at Duke. I took theater and I took drama and I used to go and uh, watch the plays, uh, you know, on my spare time, I used to go watch them rehearse. So uh, I was really cool with the drama teacher over there, uh, the theater teacher. And when I started doing some of those shorts uh, with Uncle Drew, I had no idea it was going to turn into that, bro. None. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I didn't, I, all I was thinking about was going out there, being old and just having fun and having endorsement. <laughs> with and that was cool. I wasn't thinking about the long term, like, yo, this could turn into an actual freaking movie. And, you know, we fast forward from doing all those shorts and I saw how many hits we were getting online. It was like, bro, I don't know if people know that's still me. Like, you know, like bro, <laughs> people like to differentiate like, yo, he's going Uncle Drew tonight. Like, what does that mean, bro? I'm the same. <laughs> like it's yeah, yeah. You're listening to I just want to remind you. Zone. Like, that's the guy that we're loving. That's I know. the guy we're in love with now. We spent segment after segment after segment. I think I called him. He's like a, a dumb guy that somebody convinced was smart. Which I suppose you could apply to either one of us, although I don't know that anybody's done like a ton of convincing on that front. But he sounded to me, when he used to talk like that, like don't every guy me. I knew. Thank you. Every guy I knew in San Marcos at like 12 30 in the morning baked kind of smart yeah but just like you know a few bong rips in and they're just like dude have you ever thought about like re the theory of relativity <laughs> i'm like oh, i don't know i guess I'm <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking more about joe thomas and uh his hall of fame chances at this that's point. right oh yeah wait a minute uncle hot mail Shout out to Prophets and Outlaws. Indeed. We need to do something with them again. I know Video Man wants to. He loves Like, them. we have a consistent... Why don't you just We have him, a Rob? consistent stream of people who are really good lawyers, really good at business, and really good at music who listen to the show. Yeah. And I think in every case, it makes them feel like, well, my stuff doesn't suck. Right. We just know... As bad as theirs. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, we'll set the bar low for you. That's how I approach marriage. So <laughs> that one hit a little too hard for you, right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, one non-birthday email, and then a lot of people wanted their birthday read, and we're gonna do that. And as usual, on a Thursday now, mm -hmm. today's Thursday. Yep. You get a lot of them because we didn't do a show yesterday. And you get the late scragglers from uh, Scragglers. Is that a thing? Someone coming late? It's mostly stragglers. Showing up. Stragglers, not yeah. scragglers. What's a scraggler? <laughs> I don't think it exists. I don't think it is a word. Subject line on this email says, <laughs> are, you, are you guys famous enough to have an obsessed fan want to kill you? <laughs> you remember this? Um, Remember the uh, situation the other day? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Sean, let me read his email. He says, if not, congrats. It's like you're just the right amount of famous you can get recognized at Central Market or that disgusting convenience store, but not too much to be annoying. I am currently in New York City. I was wishing I was a few blocks north when listening to you talk about John Lennon being killed. Would have been so meta. Mm -hmm. That's Sean. Yeah, I wish you were there too, Sean. That would have been so cool. Uh, but he's right. We're just famous, uh, but not famous enough for grapevine cops to have ever heard of me uh, to let me out of that ticket. Dude, I've worked here like 20 years. This is a really big station. The ticket? No? You don't know record? You're you're a male between 25 and 54, but you're not listening to uh, sports radio? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Bad radio? Uh, hardline? <laughs> that's, that's me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a muser. <laughs> it is funny, like, I think we just like take for granted sometimes like the parlance of our business. I I even recall like when we had Dan Campbell on 
And he was like, what's the name of your segment now? Yeah. And like when I used to tell people like, oh, I work for a sports radio station. They're like, uh, you know, which show is it? And they didn't mean, they, they meant like which station. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that people just don't totally understand it, but whatever. They're all idiots, not as like long, us. As, I suppose as long as you're not murdering me, then. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're not that that's obsessed. A, that's a good outcome. So the one I had that's not a birthday is, uh, <clears throat> did you read the email the other day about the Wonder Woman cr- uh, creator? Go on. So my question the other day was, uh, I had no idea what Wonder Woman really is. Like, I knew she fought bad guys. Yeah, is she from another planet? Didn't seem to really be from another planet. Didn't seem to be, like, her parents got killed and somehow there was a bat involved. Um, I, I had no idea other than she had, like, Huge jugs. <laughs> she did. She was just fantastic looking with right. great and very strong. Uh, it turns out the creator of Wonder Woman. Uh, let me pull his name back up here. Invisible Jet. William Moulton Marston uh, was a big feminist. Okay. But, but was also really into bondage. Okay. Which you is, can be all those things. Of course. Yeah. Which is why she had the rope. Okay. Whip, she lasso a, yeah, the situation. lasso would. Yeah. It was a magic lasso where if she lassoed you, you had to tell the truth. I think. Okay. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, the which the, Linda Carter could make me tell the truth. Of course, lasso or no. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But anyways, yeah. Somebody just emailed us about that, and apparently, the creator of this also uh, he had multiple families. Whoa. Which is something you could just do back then, and I suppose still be a feminist. We have talked about this before. And in fact, I would actually say that that makes you more of a feminist because you're providing uh, emotional and ostensibly financial uh, support to two women. Yes. What are you doing? Yeah, so you're a better... I I barely do it for one. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Having a secret family is like the most feminist thing you can do. Yeah. Shout out to that guy. If you really think about it, yeah. So that's the, the story. Uncle Hotmail, yeah, I'd like to know more about just anybody with a secret family. I love that. It seems exhausting. Well, I think like like we've talked about before, I think it's much less possible now. I think in the 50s, you just like, I mean, I, I remember hearing about people in the 50s that like my grandparents knew or like a, my dad's friends, parents, whatever. Their second family was like in a, the county over. Yeah. Because you just would never no. venture that far. And you were not on social media. Now you have to be, you have to have a job where you travel a lot. It's yeah, just, it, it's just, it's tough for guys trying to have, it's too bad. It's tough, but I think uh, your question has always been, and I think this would be considerably tougher, can a woman pull it off? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to read at least one story about that, and I never have. They would have to be, obviously, a step-parent in the second situation. Or um, they could be, their insides could be a rocky place where no seed could find purchase, (laughs) and they just have to adopt. So they have two adopt families. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. But... You think women are probably just too smart for that? Yeah, yeah, and like they realize. And that's... the other thing too is like none of them. Or have... they're all like, "Oh, I want one man," like an idiot. Like an idiot. Yeah. Or um, and to my understanding, none of them have jobs. No, how would they do that? So how could you even pull off? Can you no, imagine? I, I, could you I, clean I... that much of a house? <laughs> that many houses? <laughs> Cook all those dinners? It's not like you can run from. Uh, Girlfriend to girlfriend, like on uh, Happy Days in, in kitchen. <laughs> Change your coat. Yeah. <laughs> Change your tie. Yeah. Uh, Uncle Hotmail. Now we get into some birthday reads. Okay. Day one, sub number 555 here. It is my Dre Bly birthday. I'm, I'm not even going to dignify that. I would not that normally care to have my birthday email read, but I thought I would at least do so this time to maybe use the opportunity and platform to promote a GoFundMe campaign to support... First of all, pro or con of what I'm getting into here? 
It's too far for me to say con. Okay. I was looking to open a bear trap for you. The <laughs> time at which I would have said con would have been before this, like when I deleted this email. <laughs> Well, that might be a bear trap because... Uh, I know, I know. I just didn't think it would be something. GoFundMe I, I campaign to support a family from our old neighborhood recently lost their young daughter in a car accident. So, uh, so far, pro or con, if I should... <laughs> Let's uh, do it. Nothing can ever make up for the sudden traveling loss of the child, but I thought it'd be helpful to promote the fundraiser to the listeners. I apologize if this request is uncouth or inappropriate. It is not. So I understand if this type of request does not get shared on the podcast. Well, it might not be. Yeah, I mean, Rob might cut it out. Well, Rob the, might just beep this whole so audio. This is very similar to the dirty sound in which I saw this and thought, there's no way Dan would ever do this. Oh, then he links the GoFundMe, and I thought, you know, at the very least, let's put this link in our show notes. And if people are interested, then uh, go to the show notes. Yeah. Or if you're a heartless monster, uh, don't do so. It's just a family from his old neighborhood. It's not the guy. I got it. Okay. Anyway, that's from Alex. Alex Baker. It's his birthday, too. So that's really the most important part of this whole email, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's at least right there. No, it'll be in the show notes if you would like to uh, support the GoFundMe for someone who's experiencing a bad bit. Yep. We have uh, Uncle Hotmail, day three, number 1765 here, <laughs> wishing a birthday shout out to my best friend. Wrong hole Richardson. Hmm. Uh, Corey Richardson. We've met him. At least yeah. I did at the yeah, Alamo yeah. some time back. Him. He's like, hey, man, I'm wrong hole. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, Doesn't feel like a name somebody just gives you. Uh, <laughs> it's his Jeff Heath birthday. 38. Somehow his wife is pregnant now, so he didn't follow Grego's instructions on how, pre- how to prevent that. Or his nickname. <laughs> uh, is the dumb zone liable for the downfall of the Alamo Draft House, much like the former terrestrial radio station, The Freak? We were at The Freak, and then it closed. Mm-hmm. I uh, I shuddered quick once upon a time. They hired uh, they hired me. They hired TC. We wrote a column for about a oh the magazine, the uh, Dallas yeah, yeah. Morning News insert. Yeah. It, yeah. It made it about. It wasn't even just an insert. Like it was a. It was a DMN product, but it was like a real thing. You could pick it up at newsstands everywhere. Uh, and it, yeah, within probably six to seven months of them bringing us on. Went Did you away. get a bunch of copies of it and give it to your mom and your dad? And yeah. Yeah. Did they frame it? Oh, look at Jake. I don't know if they framed it, but I definitely have. TC's wife framed it. Okay. Yeah, but I have I have a physical copy of every one of them. You've been a longtime supporter. I'm not surprised. Yeah. We'd like to hear the Hala Luca song that was played at the close of the 531 episode from Corey. Can we play that at the end of today's epi? Do you do that, Rob, or no? Sure. Rob's like, no. Okay, uh, that's from Corey Ashcraft. So Corey's best friend is Corey. That would Isn't be tough. That just sweet? I remember there were times when, uh, and I've told you this before, but I believe Jake or Jacob was like the most popular white male name for like a seven to ten year period. And there were times where I'd go to like a a gathering, a party, like high school, post high school days. There'd be like 20 people there and like four of us would be named Jake. (laughs) We'd always take a photo like, like, yeah, very Old Testament. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, Blake's in a Facebook group, so. Dear Daniel, I'm sending ten dollars to read this and for the cause. Mm. People will do that to the uh, the mo. Don't do mo. <laughs> don't do. Don't even start with mo. I'd prefer Vinny than mo. <laughs> Today is my Jan Mahimni birthday. Tell Jake to shut it. This is a great bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Noted. You paid 10 bucks. I'm a late blooming DF at day 68, but that fits because I always come before 69. Um, Everybody knew where you were headed. No surprises there at all. <laughs> uh, more gaming esports talk from Blake. Much love, John Carley, 
P.S. Please roast my name, Jake. Um, why? why are I you a low-key ro- roast twin? <laughs> Dude, you you are wearing my ass out today. <laughs> We just came from the Wash Studios, so I'm, I'm still got it in my head. <laughs> Cannot deal with this. Hey, Dan, Dave. John Carly? Like, I don't understand what the what the bit, like. I don't know. John Carlo, or I don't know. I don't, that's, that seems like a perfectly normal, cool name to me. What do you got? Oh, is it a. a John Carlos is one of the black fisted. Yeah, uh, yeah, the Olympics. Yeah, okay. Black Glove. I guess both of them had four black fists. Actually. I would never roast that. Black guys. Yep. Uh, day one, number 332. Uh, it is my MAGA bloody sock birthday, in parentheses, Kurt Schilling. Mm. My leader is Jake thinking the Salem witch trials were, quote, less than a half century ago. Okay. Got a lot of feedback on that. I clearly meant a millennium. I meant to imply 500 years ago, which would have placed me exactly when they happened. But I did. What did he think? It was like 1970. Right. Yeah. Picasso. What? (laughs) Salem Witch Trials are like 1600, right? Yeah. So I just. Picasso burned a witch. Yeah. No, I. I, (laughs) Well, when right before going in to see the Godfather. Right. And watching the Miami Dolphins finish off a. Perfect season. Right. Larry Zonka once uh, <laughs> burned a His witch. wife uh, was actually burned at the stake. It was motivation for him. Uh, Jeremy Edwards. That's his uh, his name. Uh, Dan, <laughs> want to wish my good friend Matt spelled with one T. How I about mean, that? I've never heard of that. Matt with one T. You hear about it a lot in uh, like, and Philip can probably comment on this you hear about it a lot in like uh like eastern european countries like the and especially like nordic countries that's a popular name Hmm. mat unlike in this country where typically if you hear like a the j-o-n with no h am i out of pocket to say that that oftentimes denotes jewish j-o-n no is that true is that where the because the H from Jesus H Christ? I don't think so. I got Jews in the building. You're Jewish, right? So okay, I just want to make sure everybody knows that when you're screaming that. I just feel like the first like ten times I saw that name, it was somebody who was of the tribe. Hmm. Not the Kyrie tribe. I believe John Stewart is uh, is a J O N. Okay. Anyway, uh, Matt, who has one T, is a day one, number 142. His spiritual leader is the ghost of Midget Sean. His earth leaders are Dan and Jake. An eventual leader is going to be Blake when Dan and Jake croak. Jeez. He's only like five years younger than me. Although, <laughs> it makes sense. That is from a fellow day oneer, Josh from Oklahoma City. Uh, that was from Tuesday, Business Wednesday. We had it is my Brian Westbrook birthday. Uh, this is from Tyler Howell, who says, I once sent Jake a very dumb Twitter DM asking if he would comment on Mike Reiner's new radio station on the ticket the day it was launched. He correctly did not respond to me. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh... I knew how to heed Phillips' advice before, even though he doesn't heed his own advice, I knew how to heed his advice before I even uh, was trained. Dude, just, Philip will get out there on Twitter with a gas can. My, my move <laughs> Just be like, yeah, whatever, bro. Shut up. <laughs> and yeah, that was like, I mean, that was a thing. We were getting a barrage of communication regarding, regarding the freak, and it was like, but in what way would this benefit me? Uh, I would have mentioned it if I wasn't told not to. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. We were pretty quickly told not to, and I just didn't yeah. want like a screenshot or something to end up, you know, yeah. published. So, no, but I mean, he was even saying, "Would you talk about it on the ticket?" I certainly would have. Um, because why not? It's not like it's silly matters in the end. Uh, and Uncle Hotmail, it's my Von Miller on the Aggies' birthday. <laughs> I was in the den in March <laughs> before everyone started whining about guests talking too much. 
Uh, on the Patreon comments for that epi, one person said, quote, strong 690 guest, which helps me get out of bed each day. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? <laughs> Whatever it takes, brother. <laughs> My leader is John Schnatter. That's the papa. And his 40 pizzas in a month taste test. <laughs> That's the papa. Yes, I made the day one df.com website so people could find their subby number. Oh, well. Contributing. For and then sure. he says, I'm also working with Blake on something else that may be coming soon. Sounds pretty vague. Ethan Stanfield. Cool. Cool indeed. A papa. <laughs> Maybe it's a papa night. Oh, you know what? You don't get a book club? Oh. I got a book club tonight, bro. Want to come over and eat eat pizza? I would love to, but I already bought groceries. Mm. Bless it. Is it a nice Ooh. salad night? That it's might probably mean something it's a like that. Taco Bell way home day. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Jay with the Dumb Zone News. Who's this brought to you by? Um, Let's take a look at the run sheet. Is it Franco and Frankel? It might be a Franco and Frankel. Can we day. talk about Franco and Frankel when we're at a different law firm? What I learned. We're not at Franco and Frankel. What I learned Damn. earlier is that. I like Frankel. You like Franco and Frankel. You're different lawyers, right? You don't do the same thing. I wouldn't touch that shit with a pole. Oop. What I, what, I, what I learned is that other highly respected attorneys like Philip Kingston hold Frankel and Frankel in the highest of regard. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's exactly what he said to me. Also, a real easy law firm to say. <laughs> it's it's to much remember, easier, you know? Much, much better than... And you notice that our, our second two partners are named Utah and Andrews, which might be the coolest law firm name ever. Yeah, you could have gone we, with that. We just need to transition. Now, yeah. my guess is, if their name is so simple, they have a very confusing phone number. Absolutely not. No, it's really simple. In fact, it's all threes. Hmm. Where do you live? What area code do you live in? Uh, uh, well, I'm in Fort Worth. 817, all threes. Three, well, three, I just three, moved three, to three. Dallas. Uh, 214, all threes. I don't know how they did that. That's fantastic. But so if they're going to be so, uh, I don't know, would you call it anal or just making sure that that's perfect? <laughs> wouldn't they be so making sure that your your rights are fought for perfectly? Like they're going to go to every, whatever level they have to go to, to make sure you uh, they're personal injury attorneys. They are personal uh, injury attorneys. And look, I don't even really like driving uh, in Dallas or even over here like we're in Richardson today because these people are maniacs. It's one of the most dangerous. Uh, these are m- the most dangerous roadways in America right around us. So if something goes down, you need to call them right away. That's right. Take a deep breath, maybe a little box breath like uh, the Harvard <laughs> commencement guy. Yeah, I think, I think. But then right away, call them. Yeah, so you're in an accident. Uh, the the car is flipping over. Right, and before like it even the, hits the ground. Yeah, I need you to uh, have that phone out and start dialing. You'll talk to a partner. Right away. You're not going to just talk to some spare. I bet this consultation is going to cost me an arm and a leg. Uh, nothing, man. <laughs> it's not going to cost you anything. Just give them a call. Unbelievable. They'll fight for your rights. Um, Franco and Franco, 214-817. All threes. Do I just keep hitting it forever, or is there a... Well, we're done with the spot now. Oh, okay. Uh, a landscape, <laughs> a landscaper in Flower Mound uh, died Monday uh, after being trapped under a lawnmower mm. in a North Texas pond. This is <laughs> terrible. I know this is this is probably PTSD for you over here. He's in he's in the in the landscaping game. Landscape architect, I yeah. believe, what they uh, they prefer these days. Yeah, he's not getting near that long. Dude, I had the worst situation yesterday. It was uh, it was in the mo- well. I mean, I guess <laughs> not the worst. I didn't die getting caught under a lawn Right. Yeah. But outside of that, uh, well, the worst situation would be being the wife of the guy who died under the lawnmower, as my <laughs> wife will tell you. I but still, go ahead. I still. Oh yeah, he found the lizard. Okay, I was in my car talking to you. And I got home, but I was still in my car. And I just had the headphones on now because I have the horrible Bluetooth echo. And so I just was like, all right, well, whatever. Like, I think there was a kid in the house. Wife was in the house. Sometimes she doesn't like to listen to me talk to you. (laughs) Cards on the table. Uh, So I just stayed in the car. Yeah. In the driveway. 
Yeah. And the, lands- the landscaping crew shows up. Mm. And they're like weed eating around me mm. while I have headphones on, like laughing <laughs> at something funny, like something funny that you said or so- you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just, uh, it like was you gotta duck down in the just car. an absolutely terrible look for me. Like, see, you should have just kept driving. And the only thing that saved my bacon, one of the guys was white. Okay. So I didn't feel, I didn't feel quite as bad about it. Yeah. No, we've talked about that. Yeah. But, like, I almost just left just so I wouldn't be sitting there while they, you know, manicured my They've rental. They've clearly taken all manicured our jobs. my rental property while I remodel. Oh, yeah, it's not even your landscaper. <laughs> no. That's right. I mean, they, the, you know, the, the, the landlord takes care of it. So, anyways, what happened to this particular gentleman is he's mowing near a pond on Flower Mound Road. Lawnmower, somehow, like, he's right next to the pond. He falls... Mm. And when he falls, he falls into pond and lawnmower mm. falls on top of him. Fort Worth police have arrested a woman that they said stole a vehicle and a body. <laughs> yeah. They were called to uh, JPS Tuesday night. They said when they arrived, they learned the incident began when an employee of a mortuary service arrived at the hospital with a, (laughs) how do you like this uh, euphemism, mortuary transport. That's what a body is? Yeah. Okay. So actually- So she stole the- They were there to- Is there there hearses anymore? I haven't seen a hearse in quite some time. Um, That's a good question, but they they definitely are still around. (laughs) But that's not how they take you, like... So this person was, was... This is a body that was, like, at the hospital. And she stole it from there. Like, they were mm-hmm. putting the mortuary transport into what I assume is, like, a van. And okay. she stole that van. They don't give you the bells and whistles of a hearse. I'd rather do that. you're just leaving the... Like, yeah, the, yeah, 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 yeah. But still, I haven't dead. seen one. Um, I'd rather have that... Then steal a car and then look back and there's a little kid in there. Yeah, those are horrible stories. Definitely heard them, but yeah, horrible stories. That's happened to me one too many times. <laughs> yeah. But the dead body, it'd be a little creepy. You know, like, this but... is not the crime I intended to commit today. Right. I just wanted to steal the car. Right. Yep. And now I get this kid. And... But you know, there's like all, there's a there's a lot of weird rules around dead bodies. Go on. Like I'm, I I remember even hearing like. Like for example, you can't just bury somebody in your backyard. Like if your if your parent died and you had like an acre of land or something, you and they were like, "This is where I want to reside in when I leave this mortal coil." You can't just bury them. And that's wrong. I thought I owned this land. You don't. I thought this is America. You don't have your mineral rights. Mm. <laughs> that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> I bet he's dealt with this. <laughs> that used times. to be a big thing. Oh my gosh, yeah. We our old neighborhood, um I always hated being in the uh, neighborhood association and everything, but it ended up getting me like a $3,000 check once for the mineral rights because so they, could they give your kids cancer. Yeah, they sold away the mineral rights <laughs> to our neighborhood. The state changed the rules. Pump them up. The state changed the rules about 10 years ago, maybe a little longer. So your title company for your real estate transaction, even if you buy a title insurance policy, and they don't realize that you didn't have the mineral rights transferred to you, you have no recourse. You're absolutely screwed. I think I've heard that before. And there are people that have lost out on like tens and tens of thousands of dollars because of this. So, anyways, this lady stole a body. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but I do agree with you that if you're going to steal a vehicle, if the two options are, boy, there's a, a child back here or a dead body. Child, dead body, or uh, just a bunch of cocaine or, or maybe pot. You stole, uh, what's his name's car? Nate Newton. Yeah. <laughs> because be this woman sweet. has been charged not only with auto theft, but abuse of a corpse. 
See, that's ridiculous. Feels like a tack on that she's like, I don't know. And uh, why is abusing a corpse even a, a corpse a thing? Like, who cares? Well, that's my... <laughs> it's a corpse. That's my point, though. Yeah, you should be able to they're, abuse they're, it. They're a... <laughs> Shouldn't you? It's dead. That's abusing an inanimate object. Oh, I abused this paper bag. Oh. <laughs> You guys know I'm right. Are you are you making the case for the, le- the legalization this. of necrophilia right now? <laughs> um, I mean, I didn't go that far, uh, but uh, you know, I'm not going to say. I'm going to say I haven't researched that enough. But just as far as like abusing a corpse, if you hit it, or if you kick it, <laughs> if you hit it, you're making it sound like they could use it like one of those beat up cars at a carnival. Yeah. <laughs> If abusing a corpse was a thing, then uh, all of a sudden Weekend at Bernie's doesn't win all those Oscars. Boy, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. What's up with the law, Philip? It sucks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Bunch of legal eagles in here today. How do you feel about Dan's position that a corpse should be treated as a paperback? All their fees are paid, you're good. The... uh, it, it's it's the people who were close to the person who used to be the corpse who get real bent out of shape if uh, if the corpse gets abused. Yeah. And I want to be clear um, on two fronts while we're here. If you die in my presence and I have a baseball bat, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Go for it. <laughs> You've basically just given me license to absolutely just destroy you we'll just be able to and then we'll see if there's an afterlife because then i'll yeah, yeah exactly. i'll pay you back and then the second one is you know and i mentioned this can you uh, hit me in the face because i don't want an open casket that always seems really weird to me. <laughs> i want a closed casket in fact <laughs> i probably don't want anything well you don't have a will or anything even close to it no so you don't that, have a will i feel like if i get you a will know this you know neither one of us do you know we've we can we can straighten this out. It's not I know. that hard. I we can't don't. afford you, dude. <laughs> you bled, True, you bled but I know us people. enough already. That's right. Um, no, but so I'm going to bash your face in and then tell people you wanted an open casket funeral. <laughs> okay. And I want you to necrophilia me. <laughs> you know what? For you, bud. <laughs> Thanks. It's in my will. Would you write that in my will? Jake no. has to have sex with my oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I'm not using you. And and the second thing I want to be clear about, uh, and this is a good opportunity for us to bring up tomorrow's guest, Danny Bayless. Okay. Um, because last time we had him on, I told you what I, my wishes for my remains, I want to be chummed and fed to sharks. Sharks in particular can't just be any. I mean, my sea luck. Creature. My luck. Like I would be chummed and like a like weak ass blue tuna would come along and handle me. But I But would, if that happened, I might end up eating you someday. Cause what? I eat a lot of tuna. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah. But yeah. And I think people should be like allowed to do that. But to Philip's point, the issue is if you don't like codify it ahead of time. So the family you, is not exactly going to be. Can you put in your will? I want to be buried at sea, which means the body just thrown into the sea. Hundred percent. Okay. Because you hear about people spreading their ashes, but right. It's hard to reanimate the ashes because I you think, get out to international waters, and what are the rules? Is but, that true? But, but like, do people actually put in their will or whatever? How they would like to be taken care of. What about shot in into space? In an unconventional manner. Aren't they all doing the that with some people, shooting them into space? But like yeah. their, their ashes? Do that with Jake. Yeah. No, that I don't a, want ashes, though. I want the body. That was a, an extremely dumb question because it presupposed that they're launching like full human bodies. Yeah. Into like I want it with a Superman outfit on. <laughs> right. Yep. I want to be launched into space. Elon Musk launched his car into space. He did launch a car up there, and they just kind of left it. Really? Is it like in orbit, or is it yeah. just heading towards somewhere? Uh, it's just going. I knew it was up there. Anyways. He might have too much money. 
There's your news. He has all the money. Yeah. The dumb zone news. I'm on a weird like streak of seeing cyber subscribe. trucks. Subscribe. I'm like uh, four straight days. Yeah. We saw one the other day. In Austin, yeah. Whenever we were having breakfast the other day, like there was, you know, but down there I expect it. Up here though. I saw one online where someone in Cleveland um, painted it like the Browns helmet. <laughs> it's fantastic. And so I hope that we see that this year when we go to the Browns game. And that's all I got on that. Yeah, no, it was a good story. Today in history. I was just trying to tack on to your cool note. <laughs> I'm always falling a, falling a little short. Falling a little short. <laughs> your chair is also like cuckishly low. It keeps shrinking though. <laughs> Watch, I'll, I'll, I'll raise it, but then it's just going to slowly shrink. Here, I'm just going to not touch a button and you guys watch what happens. That's the one we give to opposing counsel during depositions. <laughs> just to just head game him a little bit. Yeah. It's working because I've been dominating him all day. So today is Thursday, June 13th. On this day in 1977, James Earl Ray, the convicted assassin of civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., the king, was recaptured following his escape three days prior from a Tennessee prison. Remember when we did that story about him escaping? I did. Well, they got him. On this day in 1984, oh, little Dan remembers this. This is a uh, baseball trade that would pay off in the short run for the Cubs with an NL East championship. They traded uh, Joe Carter. Good friend of ours. And Mostly. Mel Hall. Oh, now that one's more your friend. <laughs> To be very clear. <laughs> For a, tri a trio of players, including pitcher Rick Sutcliffe. So he's traded on June 13th. Okay. And back then there was no interleague play. So in the National League, from June 13th on, Rick Sutcliffe goes 16-1 and for the Cubs and wins the NL Cy Young. That's an amazing story. You have to admit it, even though you hate baseball. Uh, I don't hate baseball, but no, you're right. It would be, you know, I was trying to think that if there was a basketball version of this recently. Like somebody that got traded mid-season and won MVP. Probably doesn't ever happen because who's trading an MVP? But, you know, I could dream last year with Kyrie. <laughs> yeah. But no, you're right. That's that's incredible. And it would never happen in, in, in football, ever. A less amazing story, but it's with the Cubs. One decade later, in 1994, uh, on this very day, their second baseman, Ryan Sandberg, retired because of poor play. He was just not playing well up to his standards. So he forfeited $15.7 million of his $25 million contract. Just said, you know what? I don't, I don't think I deserve this money, and I won't take it. That's like the most respectable sports story I've ever heard in my life. And I'll bet you in today's day... The MLBPA would never allow that. That's probably true. That's probably true. Because that could true. set a dangerous precedent. He had a video game. Ryan Sandberg? Mm hmm I just looked it up. It was called Bases Loaded to make sure I wasn't having like a Mandela effect type thing. That was basically the way like a lot of people how uh, they got into soccer. That's how I knew baseball. Video games. Video games. As Blake would say. <laughs> On this day in 2004, in College Station, former U.S. President George H.W. Bush did a 13,000-foot parachute jump over his presidential library. I remember that. Was that a solo? There's no chance, but... Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, yeah. You, were you were there? there? Yeah. Wow. Was he tandem with Greg Abbott? <laughs> Didn't Greg Abbott do a tandem? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he did. No, Army guy? Yeah. That makes sense. I, I could see a chance. H.W. was an Army guy, right? Yeah, he was in the... Some he, was a, he was the head of the... Yeah, Navy, but he was the head of the CIA. I thought he also served. Probably oh, he did. did, yeah. All Engin them old served. Engineered his, many... His first parachute mission was when he got shot down. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. He was shot down. 
It's pretty badass to su- survive that. Oh, it's super badass. Like, if I do that, then I'm like, I definitely have the confidence to overthrow several Central, Amer- uh, Central American governments <laughs> uh, as the head of the Central Intelligence Agency. Um, what I was going to say is I could definitely see myself being like 90-year-old skydive guy in the event that I'm like still kicking. You think you'd do that over like heroin? <laughs> like we talked about, would you try yeah, yeah. heroin when you're 90? Yeah. Like um, knowing that, hey, why not? Gonna no, die soon anyway. Probably not, because I feel like if you've made it to that point, that could push you over the edge of life. You're probably dying if you try heroin, but skydiving's relatively safe. Would you think it was cool? So you learn, okay, you you find out you have cancer, inoperable, so far, or whatever. So far, no. Okay. <laughs> But you learn to skydive. You take all the classes so that you you, you don't, don't even... have to take classes really. You Hold just... on, though. You don't do tandems anymore. Oh, okay. okay. You get to okay. the level. This is the skydiving chief over here. You've done solo, right? Yeah. Yeah, of course. How many times? Sixteen hundred. Yeah. Have we been alive that many days? Do some math for me. He's done sixteen hundred solo jumps. Do we need to know more about him? I think we do. Luckily, we're kind of locked in with him for a long time. Yeah. We've, we've got a lifetime deal yeah. we signed with Rob. So we'll have plenty of time to learn about that. That is amazing. That really is. What were we just talking about? Uh, I don't know. On this day in 2015, a gunman in Dallas, Texas... Open fire on officers outside Dallas police headquarters. He was later shot and killed. Later shot and killed through the windshield of his van by a police sniper. Was this the one? I'm confusing two stories. Then so, this is the attack on Jack Evans, the, the police okay, headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not okay. Got it. Not the one that was on June or excuse me, July seventh with bomb Luca bot day. Yeah, or these bomb bot. Do you remember bomb bot? Oh yeah. It was felt like a turn towards the dystopian, perhaps. But yeah, I remember this one also. Now that you clarify it, it's crazy. And we have a yay boo on this day in 2017. Uh, comatose Otto Warmbie. Is that how you say his name? He was released by North Korea after more than 17 months in captivity. Fantastic. I, I'm glad to see Otto coming home. I'm, I'm hoping we can go. I was thinking he'd join my softball league. We'd hang out together, maybe go have a, a pitcher of beer. Well, he was in a coma, and the 22-year-old college student who had suffered severe brain damage died six days later. Oh. So that's the boo. I'm just learning this. That was not good. <laughs> that was the negative. That was a horrible, horrible story. But also at the same time, it's like... If you decide you want your, like, exotic college trip to be to North Korea, things might go south for you, you know? You went to Mexico, I went to Spain, he chose Pyongyang, (laughs) and uh, he came home in a coma. Today's birthdays of really famous people, uh, Stars head coach Pete DeBoer, 56. Love him. Pete DeBoer. Does he have what it takes to win? <laughs> He's like been to the finals. Don't be that guy. For a million years. Uh, former Cowboy Gerald Sensabaugh, 41. I remember him being pretty interesting. Former Cowboy Richmond Flowers is 77. Wow. You know, the one thing I know about him. Wasn't it his son? Was like on so, right? the first Hard Knocks. And he played guitar and... That's it was the big. That's big the story. only thing I know. Yeah, and then he got cut. Right. Yeah. He had like a phenomenal preseason, and then I believe he ended up getting cut. Well, how are you going to make that roster of the five and eleven? Dave <laughs> right. But there was a a fast white guy who played for the Cowboys, so we were all like, "Just give us something, <laughs> give us something to believe in." And then I, yeah, I'm pretty sure they cut him. Former star Valerie Bure is fifty. He was a star just for a minute. Was married to Candace Cameron. I don't know who that is. She's some actress. Former star Jason Spezza who? is 41. Oh, Full House. Okay. Jason Spezza. Uh, 
you want my bullet point uh, bullet point rundown? Yeah. Hilarious laugh. I don't know if you recall that, but when the stars acquired him, we figured out that he's like got a really funny laugh, and that'll give oh, him here time it to is. see if he. Can... <laughs> it's not it, but it's not that far off. Oh, here it is. The... Nope. Oh. Nope. Um, one of the. <laughs> this is gonna sound really weird. But one of the coolest things I've ever seen uh, in the sports world was a Stars trip that we were on. Uh, it was before the game, but I believe he also did it in the intermissions, like watching him wax like, and tape his stick. Okay, you said wax. Yeah. He was like super, super, super particular about it. Like everybody else was just like, whatever. And he was like a, like a blacksmith out there. And the third thing is Ralph Strangis lived with him. Really? The fourth thing is, not a fan of having to tuck in your shirt. Uh, that's not you're you're confusing. That was um, Brad Richards. Damn it! That I might be confusing point three also. <laughs> <laughs> I am, but it was definitely Spetsa that I saw like doing the woodwork. It was cool. <laughs> I'm just looking for laughs. <laughs> that one is labeled Jake Come Wee's Laugh. I don't know why. I did not label that. I generally won't put that word in the labeling system. I, I, I respect that about you. Who else is... Kind of chilly on here. <laughs> Jerry Laugh <laughs> Montage. What, Wendy, that's... <laughs> <laughs> we just have spent 20 minutes talking about it. I'm, I'm, All right, never mind. Yeah. Nope. Nope. No? Whose birthday is it? You don't want any more of these? No. I don't. Okay, here's what I'm betting. I got it. We got hitches on one side Garrett and slants on the other side. How about that? <laughs> You're all over it. I'm cracking this code, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I remember the time I had to watch a full... USFL or AFL game because Jason Garrett was calling it with Jack Collinsworth. Oh, man. Phew. That was tough. Oh, here we go. Jason Spezza laugh. What a payoff. We're not too worried about it. If we were worried, you guys would know, I guess. <laughs> I got to talk to the rink guys. I think it's new. Do you remember the goals, though? Yes, I remember the goals. Fuck got given to Danny Heatley because it was 500th point. <laughs> so... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did I make my daughter vote? No, she doesn't have an email address and it won't until she's 18. <laughs> How much of an influence? In summer can be a distraction if there's somebody asks for a trade request. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> he has a Beavis and Butthead laugh. It's very, very endearing. <laughs> <laughs> we made a song? <laughs> Thanks, Dips. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, I remember the goals. Yes, yes, I remember the goals. The goals, the goals. <laughs> Thanks, Dips. <laughs> thanks, 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 Dips. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Jason Spetz has a funny laugh. Respect. Never lived with uh, Ralph Strangis, despite what others might tell you. Penny Oleksiak is 24. Ah, sister of the big rig. Sister of Jamie. She has won seven Olympic gold medals. Yep. So apparently their hockey team is like our women's basketball team. I don't think she plays hockey. Are you sure about that? No. I'm pretty sure she... Let me see. Okay. Does she do something else? What does yeah, she do? Yeah, I think do? so. Javelin, discus, is that still a thing? She's a, uh, she's a swimmer. Swimmer. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good place to win a lot of medals. <laughs> Why don't you like, do did it Michael then? Phelps win like ten medal? Like, yeah, well, he was like a phenomenal athlete. Yeah, though. but all you have to do is kind of like, you win it, and then you do one that's a little longer, and then you win that one, and then you do one that's a little longer. That's a good point. It's not like you can go like uh, win the medal in basketball and then be like, "I'm gonna yeah. go play three on three. Right? <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good point. Hey, thanks. You're you're very welcome. Tony Bruno is seventy two. I used to be a fan when he was on uh, radio, right? Yeah, he would do yeah, ESPN yeah. Radio. Okay. 
I think I probably at some point ran the board for his show. Actor Malcolm McDowell is 81. Is he... Uh, Clockwork Orange? Yes. That's, that's right? The only reason I know that is because I heard the fake Dan McDowell. Did you morning. Clockwork Orange? Are you Clockwork Orange guy? Absolutely not. Ah. Oh. Absolutely not. It, you would love it. No, yeah. I've seen it. It's hilarious. And you didn't like it. No. It's too weird for me. But there was a time, much like with the movie Garden State and uh, Christianity, uh, Christianity, where I pretended to like it because I thought it would make me cool for girls. Yeah. <laughs> No, you got to pretend to like some Garden stuff. Garden State, yeah, Clockwork, and uh, Jesus. Yeah. Whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah, you know. Actor Richard Thomas is 73. Some, if you're old, know him as John Boy Walton. If you are younger, you know him as Wendy's dad in Ozark. Did you watch Ozark? Tried. Or did you hate it? I think I made it four or five episodes. I just said... This is just dog shit. Tim Allen is 71. Wow. Wow. Cocaine. Like trafficking, not possession. Great story, right? <laughs> you, you come back after that? Yeah, no, I I, I remember... It shows like, about our, our rehabilitative uh, system. <laughs> sure, yeah. yes. Our penal Limiting system. Resi- uh, which is one of the funnier systems, I think, as a kid, to realize oh. that you're... Yeah, without a doubt. The, uh, in the United States... A penal system? <laughs> yes. Just when you're a kid, though. It's not funny no. now. No. Rivers Cuomo Damn. is 54. One of the better live shows I've ever seen. Yeah? Yeah. Weezer. On the beach. With Blind Josh. That might have been the night he found my flip-flops for me. <laughs> So you lost your shoes and Blind Josh found them. Yeah, I mean we were in like we were in the sand, you know, watching this concert. It was there were thousands of people there. Yeah, his sense of smell though is really acute. And I think that's what it, it probably yeah. did it. Yep. And he picked them up with his cane and handed them to I wonder he, if he can also watch baseball on TV and d- like dissect pitches. How come they don't hire him instead of a drug sniffing dog? <laughs> Who do because you think? he would keep the drugs. I was going to say, though. That's a good point. Well, then that gives you something to do with them, and you don't have to destroy them. <laughs> Win-win. Yeah. <laughs> it helps this guy and his glaucoma, or whatever. <laughs> I don't think... Yeah. Just go with it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably got glaucoma. It's in there somewhere. It's, it's possible. Ashley Olsen is 38, so you know what that means? I do. Mary Kate Olson is thirty eight. Do you still uh own the domain? Uh now you, I have that you bought uh thirty years ago? See, you have a countdown clock to when they turn fifty because you like the older lady. Yeah. I don't know, man. They both just have like a very nubile affect to me that I I don't enjoy. And uh this one's for Jake. Steve O fifty. Hell yeah. Although don't shame him for not as cool being in since recovery. he's sober. That's not true at all. I'm he, with Bill Maher. You're going to smoke pot on set with me or else we're not doing the show. Did you uh, hear that story? I did not. Like, apparently Steve-O publicized that Bill Maher was going to have him on his podcast. And I guess Bill Maher's bid is we smoke pot on the podcast. I have seen that, yeah. Because he's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the producer was getting with Steve-O, and Steve-O said, hey, I'm recovering and stuff, and uh, if, if it's cool, I'll just not do that. Or maybe, you know, he could not smoke while I'm in there and stuff. Yeah. And the producer said, nope, that's not the way we do things. That's... And then Steve-O, like, publicized, put that out on the social, saying, hey, look at what their producer said. Don't you think this is bad? <laughs> maybe ours should, uh, should take that rule up. Steve-O... Uh... As part of a recovery, really into dogs. Like he trains dogs and stuff now and rescues dogs. Also, my uh, my girlfriend, when I was probably either end of high school or, or early college, went to Cancun. She saw Steve-O at a bar like he was paid to be there. And all he really did was get up on the bar and like smash shit on himself. So like... That sounds great. 
Yeah. Like, she, I would have gone there to see that. She had a pick, and I don't know what they would have paid him. I don't know, like, how long his gig was for. I don't know that it was, like, really all that organized, but she was like, yeah, I saw him, like, smash a Corona bottle on the bar and stab himself in the chest. Oh, Jesus. And it was just like, yeah, that's that's Steve-O now. Or not now. Were you, like, then. jealous that she oh, got to see God. that and not you? Yeah, she was like, I had sex with five other guys, and I was like, tell me about the Steve-O part yeah, more. Yeah, like, that's what I... <laughs> like, what was he like? Yeah. That was the part I was really, really jealous of. Sarah Heppola is 14 years sober? I did see that. Now you want to make fun of her? Uh, yeah, quit her. <laughs> Can't handle it. I'm, how many years, I got to find out the first time I ever uh, toked it. Oh, I know when I can just look for my dad's wedding date. There you go. The day he got married is I actually tried pot with my soon-to-be aunt, who was my age. You know, his his wife is close to my age. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, got to try some pot before I even got into high school. Or maybe it was early in high school. She went to Catholic school, and Ooh. that's what you heard about the Catholic school. Yes. She went to an all-female uh, Catholic school, and it was like... Wild. Those, yeah, yeah. There's, that's that's the, the weird secret about private schools, don't you think? I'm uh, sending my kid to this school to get him out of public schools to straighten him out. And it yeah. turns out, those kids party harder. Than, like, I had yeah. a buddy, you know, Ed. <laughs> I never knew Ed until we were in college. But Ed told me he was doing cocaine in high school. I'm like, what? <laughs> like I was, I had a Bartles and James, like a, that's a wine cooler. Yeah. That was the, as, as far as I went in high school, in public school. And yeah, some guy I mean, smoked cigarettes and I was like, ooh. <laughs> this rebel. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I've told you this before, but the, the first time I ever smoked pot was at church camp. Uh, in Incredible. In the, su- the summer between eighth and ninth grade. I did not smoke pot again for about five, six years. Like a year into college. But yeah, I mean, I got to church camp and it was like <laughs> what the church camp kids were doing. So talk about your all time backfires, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Born on the stand out dead, Martha Washington, George's wife. Yep. You know what she used to do? Load one up. Mm hmm. And Ma Ferguson, Miriam, Ma Ferguson. That's a great story. Philip probably knows it as well as anyone in here. The first female governor of Texas. That's pretty much the whole story. Her husband was the governor, and, like, I don't know if it was just term limits or he had been convicted of potentially crimes. Uh, it, I can't remember if he got convicted, but he was... He was in trouble. ...severely disgraced. Yeah, and so everybody was just like, well, just put her up there. And everybody just voted for her. So they voted for her, and knowing he was, he's he was in charge. He was just still the governor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but they just made. Ma so it Ferguson. isn't like this great story it's of really feminism not. and. No, it's not at all. She was a hundred percent a puppet. Okay. Yeah. It's a tough one. Uh, died on this day, still dead. We have Chuck Knoll. Do you ever we have him on? Chuck Knoll, no. Okay. I think he was. Notoriously, I, I've never even seen him interviewed. I, okay. He feels like he was a very... I think I once talked to Sam Rotigliano. I don't know if you're thinking of that. That was an old Browns coach. Chuck Knoll was the uh, Steelers, Steelers yeah. of the 70s. Like, how many coaches the Steelers have had... Like, four and Since 1969, years? three, right? Yeah. yeah. Chuck Knoll, Cower, and Tomlin. That's kind of amazing. Actually, it's very amazing. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Ned Beatty, who is not only in Superman, we all know that, but of course Deliverance. Do you ever see Deliverance? Unfortunately not. It's been on the have list. Have you seen like that scene? Yes. Okay. Yes. Not only have I seen that scene. Um, Did you ever finish while watching that scene? No. Okay. I, I didn't do that. But there have been multiple uh, like rafting or canoe trips that I've taken where we were worried about some of the houses we were passing by. But there would be people out front that were like, looked a little de- deliverancey. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, died on this day, still dead. Tim Russert. Oh, man. 2008, 
a meet the press, the meet the press moderator, yeah. right? You're a fan. I mean, I was. That was like in my into politics days and mm-hmm. being a neoliberal centrist. So, I wonder what you would major in now if you went to college. Uh, like, would you get into political science like you did back then? I mean, I I don't know. But I guess I, you don't know what you'd be like as I, an eighteen year old. I love you, dude. You probably used to watch Russert's Meet the Press all the time. No, we can't. I have a minority opinion on Tim Russert. You do, not a fan. One of the worst interviewers ever to have a job that big. And and, and retrospicable. In retrospect, like I don't think Philip is wrong. He was not really all that particularly intelligent, but he just had a very commanding presence. He was big, you know. And he would kind of lean over the table, and I don't know. I liked it. So I just learned something about him this week. That he went to college in Cleveland. And he went, I think it was Case Western Reserve. And no one else has heard of that. I was going to say, I, I didn't know there was a college <laughs> Like if in I Cleveland. say that, you're yeah, going to yeah. go, oh, no, oh, oh yeah, case. 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 Okay, yeah, classic. classic case. Uh, and he was at Ten Cent Beer Night. Oh, wow. That's cool. I was listening to a podcast about Ten Cent Beer Night. Do you remember the brief period of time where they it. tried to force Tim Russert's son on us? <laughs> I was well, not was talking suppressed? to you. Like same show? Um, I don't know if it was same show, but I'm almost positive it, it was same network. It definitely gave Jack Collinsworth. <laughs> Did I do that right? I think so. Okay, good. Fantastic. <laughs> See, I support when my partner uh, tries something new. <laughs> I wish we could get that over on this side of the table. I've heard to beat your brains in with a bat when you die. That's true. That was pretty cool of you. You're welcome. <laughs> What's the uh, song I'm supposed to have ready for the end of the show? No one can remember. Uh, anyway, at this point of the program, even if we can't hear him, you're saying it's feeding through? No, I can hear it now. Oh, okay. Is when we do closing remarks. And we initially anticipated uh, Adam Romo, but apparently he's... Uh, I got a text from Putting Romo. Putting out some fires. Said that the... <laughs> As CEOs will do. The grapevine Eatsies literally caught fire this morning. And he went there instead of coming here. And he's very disappointed. He was looking forward to it. Mm. He, he did send food, though. The guy is solid. Trust us. Yeah. We and know. He was you our, know. He was our star witness up on the witness stand. Like, he was our only witness, right? So... I feel like... He and the judge had weird chemistry. They really did. You talk about J.J. Reddit or John Clay or whatever his name is, and Doris. Yeah, no, there, there was something. They were, they were. Uh, I, you know, he's an attractive guy. He's, it's not just that. And I he's feel a like personable he's, he's, a, guy. he's a cultured, cultured man. Yeah, you know. And if you're with one of these types over here, right? You know, they run in these circles where, you know. The other thing is that he's this, like, spent- let me tell you this. These people don't eat Hot Pockets, all right? <laughs> Especially like an old one they find in their rental I house. I had one last <laughs> night. <laughs> and it wasn't even one you bought. At halftime. <laughs> so, yeah. Romo has spent an enormous amount of time in courtrooms. He's been a you know, corporate representative for his corporation in, in litigation a ton. So he's like a pro. Prepping him was a joy. How about for us? It was what I expected. <laughs> I thought prepping me was all right. No? Uh, actually, you, you, you just are, kept, you you are just, a... You I, just kept I, telling me to back off. Like, don't... Like, I, I got all the check marks. Like, Jake got a passing grade when we did the prep. And you guys said, no, 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 don't say that, don't say that, don't say that. But then it worked out for you. It worked I, out okay. I've said this before. You were you were quite comfortable on the you you learned all the rules, and then you learned which ones you actually wanted to follow. <laughs> That's what you got to roll, bruvs. Whereas I was just like, all right, show me the play, show me the route, I'll run that route. I'll be there, kind of a lunch pail type. Like I got the <laughs> angles, <laughs> then I'll run. You can hear a lot of uh, <laughs> Philip, of course. Uh, if you want to go back, if you're somewhat of a new listener, we have. The Lawyer Roundtable, which was a four-part series, which uh, a lot of people have just said, that's where I started listening to you guys. And uh, That's where you're going to get the, the fan that murders you. 
That that's a weird thing to be a fan of. <laughs> yeah. I have brief intros. Yeah. Uh, we have special guests today. Jacob, uh, my friend Jeff Cagle's friend, came. He also is a listener to Loserville, my podcast. And oh, if you nice. want to talk about the Venn diagram. See, that's why he had us out here, yeah. to promote his podcast. Yeah. That's it, yeah. yeah. That's actually, probably my social media is also the best way to find the law firm, which we've established cannot be spelled. <laughs> um, <laughs> Say it, though. Shields Winupst. Winupst, okay. Um. We have the great Matt Stubbs, uh, landscape architect extraordinaire, longtime friend of TC and Jake's. Uh, we've got the great Kevin Vela, superb business lawyer, particularly for startups. Very smart guy, good friend of ours. Did I uh, note, note Kevin Vela just commandeered one of your offices and was in there like working like a lawyer does? Alpha. Yeah. Uh, Absolute alpha move. He, yeah. He he asked. He I, was very polite. Because I yes, walked of down the hall gonna... to get some food and I'm like, wait, that's Ke- does he work here? <laughs> like you just took over someone's office. There's a bookcase behind him and all this. Well, and, and Jeff Cagle was going to be in here, but he's literally doing a mediation from my office. So that's apparently how this works. And we have also the great Neil Berger from Carrington Coleman. Um I decided to get all smarter lawyers than I was for the show. Well, you're very good at facilitating. I don't know. I was, in fact, Jake and I were worried. We were talking before we ever did the uh, the whole thing. You were our only lawyer. Uh, we ended up with the dream team. But remember when even introducing him to Brunig, it was like, oh, should we do that? Like, I, I'm not sure. I don't want somebody to, you know, intrude on your turf. Like, if you want to do, and uh, Philip's like, yeah, bring him on. And now Brunig's like tired of hearing from me. Yeah, I, I love that guy so much. But no, you were a, you were the puppet master in, in as far as pulling everyone's string and using them and using everybody to their certain strength, I thought. He you is were, like a. You like were very a, willing to back off and say, no, this isn't my, my thing. It felt, it felt very much like being involved in sports to me, you know, because you need somebody who's like, look, uh, I have a bit of a dominant personality here, but also that doesn't mean that I'm going to exclude other people from being involved or just like constantly railroad you um, because I'm me. Yeah. You, like That's like what you need. And it was awesome. Well, I think I've said this before. I learned how to do that from making mistakes, <laughs> not, not because I'm genius. Um, yeah, and it should be mentioned that both Frank and Liz send their regrets. They both wanted to be here. Frank is on some fabulous vacation. I can't remember where he told me he was going. And Liz is trapped at work. Uh, so sorry they didn't make it. I offered to buy Brunig a ticket down here, and he didn't even respond to that. So. <laughs> that's that's um, very uh, predictable. So Frank um, alerted me to a... Uh, my ticket confession conspiracy theory Okay, that I didn't know if you all had been exposed to. Were you aware that you don't really have a lot of subbies? What does that mean? The, uh, the, the theory as, as Frank forwarded me some like we're, we're, choice we're screenshots. Doing like farming? I should have never introduced Frank to my ticket confession. That this was, is true. It was not a smart, not a smart. <laughs> Cause that's run by, I think the guy on there is a lawyer. Or and somebody we'd, we'd be like claims to be, but it's like every now and then you read it and you're like, is this this is a lawyer? I don't know. Okay. Um, shots fired. The uh, anyway, he sent me some screenshots, and the theory goes that your success is uh, phantom because I have in fact paid for the ma- majority of your subscribers. That's where our money's been going. Uh, apparently. So it's like a laundering thing because it's just going back to Philip. <laughs> Well, I want to be very clear. Uh, I don't care. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds awesome to me. (laughs) Like, yeah, I don't know what the end game of the conspiracy theory is. That's um, awesome. But yeah, that's that's the that's the theory. I feel like that's the type of people we should try to get on. What the guy from my ticket confession? Well, the person who has that theory, like, just explain it to us, like. Tell us how, how and why you think this would, would be beneficial to anybody involved. But then how do you get him out of Phillip? the room? How do you what? How do you get him out of the room? Mm. Well. That's what Blake's for. That's what we're worrying uh, about right here, Philip. How are we? Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> that's a Zoom six, guest. Six, yeah. two, <laughs> six, two, six, eight is what the followers are. One more. We're one away. 
I bet it happens today. You think we're going to get to 6269? I think so, yeah. She's grinding on the gram. We got Danny coming up tomorrow. That's right. Congrats to Rachel for really pumping up those <laughs> gram numbers. Now, what does that mean? And X and Facebook. And X and Facebook. She just wants to make sure she gets congratulated for all that she should. And so, she should. I feel like you're probably headed somewhere with this, but wh- why do you have those biscuits? Uh, biscuits are for presents in a minute. Okay, I was going to say, like, we need to... You, you're going to... You're, you're, we're going to discuss the biscuits. Do you remember the, la- the last gift that he gave us? I brought it to the rent house with me. The last gift that he, that Philip gave us was probably uh, like salsa or something, right? Uh, that might have been the last one, but right. the one I'm thinking of is the piece of Sky Mirror. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You brought it to the lake house. <laughs> yeah. Or did I say lake house? I meant rent house. Yeah. I, oh, brought, rent, I brought it to your, yeah. your current house. Like when we moved out, I was like, I have to make sure they you don't screw this up. House. Yeah. I, f- I found myself at the uh, dedication of Sky Mirror. <laughs> standing with uh what is that sentence yeah why were you there uh were you on I, the council back then i was chairing the arts and culture committee and so jerry's people <laughs> invited me um and he was super cool to me that i mean that was nice but i found myself with al michaels and chris collingsworth absolutely doing a version of the chris farley show <laughs> you remember remember when yeah <laughs> y'all are great yeah and Chris is like, now nah, here's a piece. Now look at this. Look at this piece of sky mirror here. They, here's uh, a piece. I, I think I turned and walked away so that they wouldn't have to. That's a I think always, that's, always I think a that's solid how, play. I think that's yeah. how I did that. Um, okay, stuff from this week. Uh, Jake, don't read any more of the shit that's coming out about the pension. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's bullsh. It's complete bullsh. I was on that board for four years. Do you know that? Uh, I knew you were involved. Yeah, we fired everybody. Um, we got the thing recapitalized. The thing that's going on now, and everybody is falling for the same shit, so I'm not, like, criticizing you. But I just read these, the, the DMN story, which I know at times is... Uh, well, and it's, you know. be, it's because yeah. it's what the pension is saying. It's what city council people are saying. But um, it is fine. It's not great. Like... <clears throat> It's not going away. Um, they are trying to get the city to borrow a bunch of money to put more money into the pension so they can have better benefits, which I get. I mean, everybody wants better benefits. But it is uh, it is currently about 69 years from funding, and I didn't just make that up, Dan. I looked it up this morning. Okay. Um, pensions do one of two things. They're like your investment accounts. You Like, I know that Blake made y'all get investment accounts. <laughs> So, have you ever, like, looked at your statement? Does it ever, like, is it ever just a straight line? Uh, No. Right. It goes up and it goes down. Um, And so, pensions are either growing toward what's called full funding, or they're dropping to insolvency. There is no middle. And right now, the first responder pension is slowly going toward full funding, not as fast as... They would want it to, but this is all a ruse to get us to give them more money. And it's interesting because it's being pushed by a member of city council whose brother is the general counsel of the pension fund. It's mm. always something like that. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> always. It's not even a brother-in-law deal on this one. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you make something that's doing decently sound like it's doing horribly, perhaps you can get it more than you actually needed uh, to get it above decent, you're picking up on the advocacy package okay. that they're that they're putting out. Okay, and in general, uh, defined benefit pension plans are actually much better than and more stable than people managing their own money. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely have heard that. You get you you get <clears throat> thousands of people get to hire the best minds in the business as opposed to the guys that you and I can afford to hire who are not. Mm-hmm. And sometimes might just have like a wild idea. Right. And they're like, well, I, I think this is going to hit. But that's what I was saying about my grandfather the other day. Like, I don't think he ever had a financial advisor. He just had the GM pension for however many years and lived off of and it. And it worked great. Lived quite well. And also love Chappie to death. You know, he and I get along great. But yeah, not 
not particularly right about the future of Social Security. <laughs> no, and uh, and and I'm not uh, I'm not a huge fan of his views on on labor or union either. <laughs> so he comes from a certain perspective. He does. He does. Um, Jake, you're wrong on Mad Max. Go back. Start with The Road Warrior, which is the second movie. Th- yeah, that's what you said. Right? Um, it is going to be so up your alley. You're going to love it. It's it's a it's a post apocalyptic remake of Shane. Were you a, I don't were, know what that do is. Do you know that movie? Nope. Shane is an old Western. I've never seen it, but I thought you might have. Is it John Wayne? No. Okay, then no. <laughs> All The only reason I know it, I think, is because they mentioned it around the table in Goodfellas when they were trying to guess a movie. And they uh, that's a pretty obscure reference. I'll just, I'll, just, <laughs> I'll just pass it back to you, Phil. Yep, okay. I will watch it. You have and my then, word. Yeah. So then, long as I don't have to pay you any more money. <laughs> I will not send you a bill for Mad Max. And you can skip the, the third one. Okay. But the fourth one is Fury Road, and it's phenomenal. Okay. Really, really four. good. And I haven't seen the new one, which is Furiosa, but it's getting phenomenal reviews. It looks really cool, so, the new one. I don't know. Uh, um, I would say, so if I had to just rank them, um, I would say just as an entry point, Fast Five, do that one first. <laughs> and then, <laughs> well, you got to start with the OG, right? You don't. Yeah, I mean, the maybe, original, but, gotta... but I feel like if you see Fast Five and you see that, like, the, you're going to be like, how did we get here? And then you can go back. Oh, okay. You know so you want, okay, all yeah. right. That's yeah. a good point. <laughs> it's just my, my take on it. That is awesome. And so we've reached the presence portion of closing remarks. And true to form, whenever I interact with you guys, I'm either actually on vacation or at this time I'm just back from vacation. You look great. Thank you. I went to Hawaii. Got a little sun. Oh, nice. And so... I brought you... Which island? I went to Hawaii and Maui, and I brought you culturally inappropriate oh. and misogynistic... Bottle openers. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. yes. That's, um, uh, that's great. So Jake doesn't have to use the one on the bottom of his flip-flop anymore? Right. Exactly. Or my jewel. <laughs> <laughs> do and, they have them on jewels now? No, I mean, oh, okay. you can make do. You could use your jewel. <laughs> yeah. And I got the bikini shot glass for a, Blake. A Hawaiian solar doll. So does she dance when you she put it dances. out in the sun? Okay, yeah, nice. yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So, so you'll be both culturally insensitive and misogynistic at the same time. Excellent. I, I, and then I brought. Blake, I'm always one of those things. I brought Blake the bikini shot glass because it's a lady with no head, which I feel like is kind of his lane. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, send yeah, c- him a picture. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, and uh, Melissa, my wife, who's a huge fan of y'all's as people, but who does not listen to the show, uh, did hear of your love for the Cheddar oh Bay Biscuits. God. And she purchased these out of the bankruptcy. These are the Red Lobster <laughs> Biscuits. She, that- she intervened in the bankruptcy to purchase. And I'm going to give Rachel uh, Blake's box because he wasn't. He didn't show up. And also, he lost the last episode I was on. You were on that episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Him and McCool. and Me and, me and McCool. Teddy E. Oh, my gosh. And that te- was an explosive episode. It was a Ted Emmerich was funnier than I've ever heard it. Don't you feel like of all the episodes you've listened to of ours, that was probably top five? The, the only thing I think could beat it is the one that you guys were so impressed with that nobody heard. Didn't you say the first Lost episode is the funniest one ever? Um, I think we might have just said that. We were doing pretty good, yeah. <laughs> At the time, it was the funniest ever, but I thought we've, we've done better. Yeah, you may have then. reached new heights. The, yeah. one, the one with all three of you guys was awesome. Yeah. We had Mike, Reiner. We oh, my God, we did have Reiner. Had that part. That's but, right, the only part we saved. Yeah. Because it was on the stream yard. But you know, Blake, I think you do a great job. Sure, but... Be clear about that. Since he lost it, he doesn't get these biscuits. That's right. That's Hell no. Those go to Rachel. The thing is, you just uh, add shredded cheddar water and butter, and then voila. I feel like if you just did that to any biscuit mix, it would no. become the, sh- the cheddar. Don't know. <laughs> no. It's a scam. I'm going to make these tonight. Okay. That's a bluff. <laughs> anyway, still super proud of you boys. 
Keep well, us thank you. Thanks for having us out here at a uh, actually a double six ninety. Pretty yes, sweet. we 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 did thirteen eighty because it's like two six nineties at the same time. Do you want to promote your business at all, or is that not something you want to? Sure. Yeah. I don't know. He, I'm a big fan of his. I've known him for a long time. Um, and he wore that shirt just to... He wore to, the NASA shirt I did wear to, the NASA uh, shirt just to troll, to, uh, troll Jake. Yeah. But I have a long history of trolling Jake with space at the IJB podcast. Yes. It's, okay. It's, it's, that's that's, that's a, not a great brag to have, but okay. <laughs> I just didn't know if you wanted to pump, pump the business at all. Uh, or yeah. Um, we're now KSS at DSGN. Uh, DSGN is our main company. Architects, landscape architects, planners, if you need anything. M Stubbs at DSGN.com. Give me a holler. There you go. <laughs> Can you come over and weed our bed? That's really what I need, landscape. Uh, if you found me in a college, I could have done that. Yeah, come on, dude. We're talking about, this is like how I Tom, worked at a golf course and maintenance. In how college. Tom Hicks gets his his lawn done type thing but i don't yeah. know based on some of the houses we've been to yeah for sure you, <laughs> i feel sure, like there are people yeah some who, of the people listening might want to call you yeah yeah so, there you go uh or philip i guess yeah, if they get philip. involved in some kind of litigation <laughs> all right sweet thanks, thanks everyone. guys yeah adios mofo <laughs> There was a wonder boy that many teams would not employ, but you don't really care for Euros, do ya? So where would he go, the fourth, the fifth, or would he fall and be a Nick? The baffling kings took back over Luca. Game was strong, but we needed proof. We hadn't seen him play Mizu, but his playmaking and passing overthrew ya. And he led the break, it wasn't fair. His step back three flew through the air. It fell and Dallas traded up for Luca. Colder than a tall glass of kombucha And we all cheered for his debut And injured deck was cheering too And every mass and shouted